Oh, Thursday night on a long ass freaking week. I don't know about you out there, but I damn sure need a beer. So I got two. Tonight, <laughs> beer flow is back in the house. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. We're going to take a look at some Great Lakes beers and talk about some other beer type things. We're going to explore Joe's new non beer down to a goatee. <laughs> Yeah, we're not going to do that a little bit. See who <laughs> yeah. you of out there in the beer world. So we'll talk about that there. And Joe from Buffalo, and you guys are all kind of like, who is that right there? So you can see him there now. We got my boy. <laughs> the new guy. <laughs> we got Eric out of Michigan, which if you caught the show a couple of days ago, we did a beer tuber spotlight and got a chance to get a little, to know Eric a little bit more. And then we got Todd here across the way from me over in Indiana. So – we're about to run off on another beer flow. How you guys feeling this week? Let's do this. Naked? <laughs> yeah, I bet you do. Mm-hmm. You're probably getting a little bit of a cold breeze coming across the face now. I'm not as warm as I used to. <laughs> <laughs> Just about made me spit out my body, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> so the question, let's just get, let's just get it out there right now, because I already no. kind of noticed this myself. So the first question tonight, and if you're commenting and watching, you can kind of put a comment in there. Does Joe resemble one of our Canadian friends, Dan Booze Review CA? If the answer is yes, if you answer yes, yes, type yes in their comments, you know. But again, yeah, if you know who Booze Review Review CA is, go check out his channel and come back and take a look and see if Joe does remind you. Could be a long lost brother. I don't know. If you answer <laughs> yes, I the names, so I don't know where the daddies were. So if you answer so yes, from another dump, brother, dump the road is going to kick you directly in the gut and pile Bob you through a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> so uh mother efforts so tonight we get into great lakes i don't know what you guys picked up and we'll talk great lakes in a little bit but i've got the uh commodore perry ipa mm-hmm. one of their classic traditions traditional beers i guess and elliot ness which is their amber lager and of course the great character elliot ness and the untouchables real life <laughs> fbi i guess tracking down al capone I have oh, yeah, Edmund Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald and, uh, and the Ohio City Open. Oh, nice. Tonight, I got the Great Lakes Brewing Christmas Ale. Okay. okay. Festive. Yep. I've got the Blackout Imperial Stout. Nice. Another one. Nice. Now, and I also, start. like Eric, I've got the Christmas Ale. Okay. Okay. So out of all the beers, only one, like the two people had the same one. That's pretty cool. And that's what I was going to say. I was going to say it's very, like, this is no pre planning. We didn't, like, you know, talk, talk to one another, like, ooh, who's bringing what? Just we happened to show up with different beers. So that's always a cool thing. Yeah. I was looking at the turntable pills in the place I was looking at. It was outdated because you got to check your dates. It's like Best Buy 51717. I was like, what the hell was it still doing out here? No. Yeah. And Rod, you didn't get it for your deals of. 50 cents a bottle? <laughs> no, I think these were like $1.69 a bottle. That's, a, that's <laughs> about what I paid. I, I got a mix of sixer for ten fifty, and and uh, this was in there. So like a that's not bad. bad. But I, know I didn't bring it up here to show it. I did pick up my first bottle of mead today for one of our breweries regularly, nineteen ninety nine. They had it for nine ninety nine. Now, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and they had some more breweries on sale. I'm not going to mess with any more breweries. They got like eight breweries in there right now. So, Just had to slide that one in there, didn't you? <laughs> you asked, so I had to tell you. <laughs> Question for you guys, though. Who has the proper glassware? Anybody? I do not have the proper Ooh. glassware. Like this for the, oh, the Great Lakes. So I got Great Lakes shaker pipe glasses back here, but you know no, I hate yeah. shaker pipe. Yeah, but look at this. This is the 25th anniversary special glass. Nice. Ooh. I mean, it's going to make it taste infinitely better. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> Automatic five out of five. Well, we'll All I got to say Samuel Adams glass. Uh, You've had this thing for a while. I got three of them. Four, though I did have four, but one broke. I had one, but my wife broke it. Uh, you ever like have somebody break one of your glasses? And you, it's not you, and you're like, you know the sound when it happens. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it's like well, someone, someone kicked your cat or something. Like full, full, dis- <laughs> full disclosure, I broke a Great Lakes uh, glass tonight. Uh, I actually had two of them. I have a little like snifter, like an eight ounce snifter. Yeah. And I washed this one out, like rinsed it out, washed it out. And I had the other one and I dropped it and it shattered. 
And luckily, the garbage is, uh, I buy garbage is on Friday, so it's now in the garbage outside. So that's on me. <laughs> is it so what, I got a question for you guys since we're talking about glassware. Do you guys get caught up in like proper glassware for certain types of beers? No, or does it really no. matter? <laughs> I just, I just, I just, no. I just like what glassware looks like. Like I, uh, I like snifters. I like tulips. I like uh, tikus. I like, uh, you know, it's nice to have like the logoed glass of stuff, but no, I don't really care. Um, yeah. My pre my preference is to not drink it out of a pint or shaker glass, just because I I feel I get slightly better aromas out of like a stemmed glassware that has the right thing. But I mean, just drink it out of glass at the end of the day, and you're already ahead of the curve. I think. Yeah, that's kind of the way I feel about it too. But I was just wondering, a lot of people get kind of you know nose up in the air. You're not drinking it out of the right glassware. How dare yeah. you? I don't get nose up in the air, but yeah, I try to put it in the proper glass. So like this glass here. Is a glass for IPAs. That looks like that's a butt I've, plug. I've got one. Uh, that's on you, Joe. No, uh, no, it has a butt plug in there. You, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then this is a lager, so I use this one for like the amber lager there. But sometimes I mix them up. I try. I don't know. I like to experience what the glass you're supposed to look at. But like the ones that have all the writing on the breweries I got in the glass collection, I don't really use those. They kind of just put them up there. That's part of the display. So, so yeah, I miss Gerald Porter. Someone out there watching this has never had this porter. You owe it to yourself yeah. to try it because yeah. it is. I almost picked that one up too. So good. It's so uh, it has um it has like a little bit more of like a roasty, almost smoky quality to it, but it's so damn good. And like I said, it's it's like two bucks or less everywhere for a single bottle. So is it like six percent or something like that? Uh, five, I think 5.8, 5 5.8. 5 uh, debate, which one do I start with here? No, seriously, don't. Um, no, 6%. You're right, 37 IBUs. Uh, you're, on, you're on the nose, right in the nose there. I'm on it. I'm on it. 7.7 7 on the Commodore Perry and 3.1 on the Elliott Ness. Every time I see the Elliott Ness, I always want to go into, like, Sean Connery for me and touch yeah. or something. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Eric, what's the date on your uh, Christmas sale? Uh, February 12th of 18. Same here. Wow, exactly the same? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. baby, it's the same batch, Daddy. Same batch. Daddy King Potters, baby! Does and baby, they have the date on the bottle, guys. Don't get angry over it. <laughs> what kind of cheese is this going to pair up well with? Uh, maybe a little bit of smoked gouda. Perhaps maybe a little bit more of your pungent cheese like the Gargan Do we have any? Oh, we do got some smoke in there. Oh boy, Jody's yeah. flipping out right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Bum shows up and he can, uh, you know, relay the information to Jody. Yeah, Bum is limited to only comments when he's not on Jody's show. You, you know, I like uh, you're drinking the LA nuts first, but the Commodore Perry. Mm -hmm. One thing that I find interesting about the Commodore Perry, it's one of the few American brewed IPAs. No, I'm drinking LA nuts first. No, I know, I know. That's okay. what I said. You're drinking that first, but the thing about Commodore Perry is it's one of the first. Not one of the first. One of the uh, more well-known American brewed IPAs that they brew basically is an English IPA, and you don't see that too much out of yeah. American breweries anymore. Um, so, I, I should probably revisit it at some point. Commodore Perry is a good beer. Ooh. Christmas ale is one of my favorite, by the way, Eric and Todd. Christmas that's one of my favorite seasonals. I really enjoy that. Yeah, the honey gives it a yes. Aspect. Yep, get a nice maltiness out of the Elliot Ness. I love Elliot Ness. That's one of my favorite amber lagers. Elliot Ness is his sweetness. Isn't Elliot Ness though? Basically, it's kind of in the same realm as a Boston Lager from Samuel Adams. I think they're both Vienna Lagers technically. They call it an Amber Lager, but I, I yeah basically yeah. think it's a Vienna Lager. And Isn't, they're pretty close, but I like this over Samuel Adams. Oh yeah, all all day, every day, every day, twenty four seven, twenty four seven, son. <laughs> I almost picked up their Imperial Red Ale. Mmm, that was good too. The Nosferatu. Yeah, I usually like that around winter time. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. This this show gave me an excuse to drink the Edmund Fitzgerald again. Not that I need one, but like, you know, you know, get, you know, you, I, I don't drink it perfect too often. Piece. Yeah, perfect excuse, but I'm like, I haven't had in a while. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. Pick it up. Pick it up. Good stuff, though. But uh, yeah, that Christmas ale, it'll work on you a little bit, too. It's a nice, uh, w without being an actual winter warmer within the style. Yeah, or maybe it even it might be even classified. I just like that it has you know, some of those seasonal spices. But like what Eric said, the honey 
works so well. Has a nice warming. I think it's seven and a half percent. It's yeah. just you get a little bit is. of spice kick in there too. Yeah, it's very. It's very, it almost tastes like I always thought. And again, I'm Polish, so in a lot of respects, don't listen to me. But uh, I feel like it, it has like a nice gingerbread cookie because you get like a lot of ginger. You get the honey. Has a nice sweetness to it. Almost and bready. It's kind of like a gingerbread cookie in liquid form. Yeah. Ooh. Now mine's not. White bread? Mine, oh, go ahead, Todd. No, not white bread, not brown <laughs> bread, not rye bread, but just bready in general. We're gonna just nondescript readiness. I, I think the spices are just right in this in the Christmas sale because they're not too overpowering, but you can still taste that they're there. There's there's a nice balance between the sweetness, the spiciness, and the bitterness. Yeah. It has yeah. just like a great balance to it. It's it's very cohesive, is the word I would use. Yeah, spice in a lot of things. Nice. This thing, like we're gonna kind of feel some, uh, kind of feel some apple flavoring in it. Do you, do you get that at all, Eric? In this one, I don't know if it's just me or if it's just I don't know. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit. It has almost a cinnamon apple characteristic to it with the spiciness. I don't yeah, know. it's yeah. just enough where you can tell it's there. It's not really. I mean, if you were to drink it, you might not even. I mean, I didn't even pick it up until you said it. I'm like, yeah, it's there. <laughs> You got any comments out there yet, Joe, by the way? Oh, we do. We have a couple. It's uh Okay. We have uh Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, not to be confused with Kent from Craig Beer Reviews. And he says <laughs> What's up, Joe Craig? looks like a new beer tuber. Hashtag pray for Joe. <laughs> but, he said, <laughs> but he spelled pray not P R A Y, but P R E Y. <laughs> I'm concerned. With the spelling well, you, of prey in the situation. You shuffle Roy Moore for thinking America's prey on other individuals. Yeah. Settle down, <laughs> settle down, Craig, aka Roy Moore. Get it under control. Uh, <laughs> Red Redbeard says, "What be going down?" Uh, well, uh, what old, up, buddy? What up? Yeah, another beer beer flow show. Redbeard's been gaming a lot too. Yeah, he he. It's fun when he gets very angry. A little bit of rage <laughs> going on. <laughs> it has to be something to do with his. I don't know, pun intended, but his red beard. Maybe. <laughs> Bum, uh, nice to see Bum again. Bum says, uh, I will be passing along a, quote, smoke report, unquote, to okay. Jody. Appreciate it. Nice. We don't have neary like smoke here. I mean, it was pretty good from, from uh, Rob, but, you know, temper your expectations when you send it to Joe. Let's not build <laughs> yeah. something up that we kind of want to. <laughs> and Count Druncula <laughs> says, Joe is a pimp. <laughs> He's an OG for sure. <laughs> Big pimpin. I don't, I don't know what's happening, but I approve. And then uh, Redbeard continues with, "There might be some rage in a little while," which I think he's hinting to. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Sweet. So yeah, that's I it for the comments. Redbeard, I think Redbeard might be on the Xbox. I don't know. Yeah, Redbeard, what do you want? Red PS4. I don't think. I'm using on PS4. We invited the PC mm -hmm. gamer. I don't, he I don't might know. be PC. He might be. That might be. Yeah, because Eric will be having his PC gaming. Well, I know he was playing that Cuphead game, and I'm pretty sure that's Xbox and definitely not PS4. Okay. I, don't know PlayStation. I think it's only exclusive to, I want to say Xbox, maybe PC. He says PC. So it's Xbox and PC, I'm pretty sure, for that game. So he's PCing it. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, Redbeard, we invited him to the Beer ana Analysis 101 last night, and he beha behaved himself, so he's welcome back to round two next week. So, <laughs> Yeah, I got the invite I was also, and I was out running around. but uh, Yeah, we were, that was after hours. I was like, we're done. J no, no, they, they sent me the one for the main oh. show. I was just out, but uh, you guys That's did um, Stella. Yeah, right? next week we're doing Nishouf. The uh, Belgian beer, so you're more than welcome, Rod, to join us. I mean, if you can bring it up in your, in your area, it's uh, probably one that you would be down to. I've got, you know, like my Belgians, I got one spot that does them pretty well getting them in, so mm -hmm. definitely a possibility. Yay, yay! <laughs> so, Taco Bell. <laughs> Segway! Oh boy, oh boy! <laughs> I don't know if you guys have Taco Bell cantinas, it's like. You know, I think of a Taco Bell canteen. I start to think of uh, Demolition Man back in the day, the movie with um, Stallone and Wesley Snipes. They had like Taco Bell was the place to go type thing. But they have cantinas. We actually have one here in Cincinnati now. But they just unleashed their own Mexican style beer called Beach Bell. So they're going to be making beer for the Taco Bell. Right now, it's only in um, 
the Newport Beach Cantina, but maybe add it to other cities later on. So kind of interesting that they're now going to be having their own like little beer. It's probably being brewed by someone else and just provide it under their name, but they're going to have a beer. They're going to try to start pushing a Taco Bell, which is interesting. What's the difference between a cantina and a regular Taco Bell? Cantina has alcohol. So we have like uh, different drinks. Uh, okay. Cantina, like you have beer, you have like different mixed drinks. You can do frozen slushy alcohol drinks, all kinds of stuff. Oh, nice. But I, I haven't been to the one here, but some of the people at work, they said it's been busy every time they go over there like, to try to get something. The food, I think, is still kind of regular Taco Bell, maybe a few upper scale type items, but. Is- is one of their slushies a Pepto Bismol slushie? Because I feel like that'd be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like a Maalox or something. I mean, we go hand in hand. We should do that. No, I don't eat at Taco Bell often. Um, but when I do, I always go for like uh, Mountain Dew's Baja Blast, the exclusive there. So yeah. I don't think I would really go too much for alcohol Taco Bell. I kind of get into like the Baja Blast isn't bad either. No, I, I I like it, and it's like I don't eat at Taco Bell that often. So when I do, I kind of get a craving for Baja Blast in general. So, but you think about with with because I've had that one before too at our Taco Bell, um, but they're using like rum, they're using vodka. Those are two easy ones you could put yeah. on those blast type things as well. That'll mix pretty easily. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I just couldn't see. I can see myself going to Taco Bell and ordering an alcoholic drink with. Well, you go to Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle, you get margaritas and beers. Yeah, you can. You can. And actually, it's funny. Like a few years back, when Chipotle was first opening around the area, um, their margaritas were like the bomb. They were like three dollar margaritas, and they were just like tons of the kill. Wow, that's oh, cheaper than yeah. the guacamole. Yeah, and it was kind of like, it was funny because a lot of them at that point had a lot of the Mexican-American workers there. And then they started having like the crossover because they used to be owned by McDonald's and McDonald's franchise. They were part of one of their subsidiaries. But then as more non-Mexican-American workers were there, it's kind of like the drinks started like not being as strong as they used to be. And it's like, can we go back to the old way? Because they knew how to make a margarita and you guys are screwing it up now. <laughs> Damn cost controls. It's like macro taking a crap brewer over. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Also, very sad as well. Because you want yeah. you want <laughs> Bunch of strong margaritas. <laughs> that was a nice margarita, especially like after a round of golf or something. We would hit one. I was there on one of the golf courses we went to, but for three dollars, <laughs> it was like a happy hour margarita. Like the deal was great. They just kept them in their pitchers. I think they still do them in like in the pitchers or whatever. We have uh, Mr. Angus Wangus uh, to add to the topic. Says I heard there is human DNA in Taco Bell meat. Well, there's two <laughs> things about that. You're probably not wrong. Also, define Taco Bell meat. I feel like they use 100% beef. Unfortunately, the name of the company that gives them that beef is called Beef. So it's 100% beef, but is it really beef? Probably not. I don't know. Well, for anybody who's ever watched Creep Show, human meat sells the best. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you ever remember the Creep Show movie. The guy was selling human parts. and like, this is like the best steak ever. <laughs> What's your secret? Oh, it's a secret recipe. People are missing from the town. But... Um, in Seattle, one of the brewers, uh, Cloudburst Brewing, just released a beer called Silence Breaker. And this is actually a nod to the Me Too movement. And for, for each pint sold, they contribute a dollar back to like the King County Sexual Assault Resource Center. And they've got a lot of bars out in Seattle already starting to get this and tap, and they're doing the same thing out there. So. Again, one of the things about craft beer is kind of the cool stuff they do in the community and everything. But you know, at some point, somebody's going to try to capitalize a little bit to try to do something there, I guess. So, but at least they're giving money. They're giving money back on it, so it's not like they're just trying to mark it off of it or anything. No, that's good to hear. Always yeah. good to hear when things like that are actually going to the charities that it needs to go to and the people that need it. You know. Yeah, and it seems like every time you turn on the news, somebody else is. Under something on the salt, so including our president, no big deal. Yeah, we're not going to run a report on that though. Everybody else is a subject to it, apparently. That's a whole different story, though. <laughs> even though it's not, it totally is, right? Even though it's not, it's totally right. <laughs> Hashtag maybe me too. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Hashtag. What about that guy? Ah! <laughs> um, and down in Houston, I thought this was going to be out of your area, John. I thought it was going to be Buffalo. But in Houston, there's a brewery. It's called Buffalo Bayou Brewery. 
and they're offering investors free beer for life with a $1,000 investment into the brewery. So not only can you be an investor into the brewery, but you're set for life on beer for life. When it says beer for life, is it one of those places where it's like you get one pint per week for the rest of your life? Or... They didn't have my print shown there, but yeah. Because <laughs> that's the one thing. It's like if I'm investing $1,000 into something that might not work, I probably want more than a free pint per week. And that's usually, I mean, there's some places that will be like, oh, it's, you know, maybe a, a pint per day or something. But yeah, I mean, if you're getting free beer, it better be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be, that would have to be something that would definitely be worth it. I mean, we have a brewery here that's just getting started. Now they finally got everything in there, but they were doing, they were looking for investors and they were getting a thousand dollars to be an investor in. And you got like different stuff from them. They didn't do beer for life. They just basically, you know, you get these kind of things and then you're set up as a permanent member of a mug club or whatever it may be and everything. So I don't know if you ever wanted to invest in a brewery, here is an opportunity to do that if you're in the Houston area. So that was kind of a, some of the stuff happening out there. And then I saw one piece here. Yeah. Go that over there on um because it's the holiday season right 10 great beers for your holiday wish list so you okay. know we love we don't we love lists around here who right? doesn't <laughs> like terrible lists <laughs> <laughs> the, the funny thing is on this list i've only had one beer and it happened to be the number one beer and I think all you guys that have had it would definitely agree. It is and you happen to pay a buck ninety nine for a twelve ounce box. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't had it. I haven't had this one yet for Kate. <laughs> it's the Coca Mesa. That's the number one beer. Give me a Coca Mesa. Coca Mesa. Yeah. yeah, it's a great beer. The Which great beer, beer was it? You cut out there, right? Coca Mesa from Stone Brewing. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's like the number one beer listed. Um, if you haven't had that one, definitely recommend it. I haven't had the 2017 edition, but 2016 was very it, solid. 8.1 and, and, ABV. And it's 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 basically their version of like a Mexican uh, hot chocolate in stout form. Um, there's a lot more. Uh, there's a lot more well-known. Um, beer. I mean, perennial Abraxas, right, Todd? Uh, yeah. Is another one in that vein. Uh, <laughs> Mexican cake from Westbrook. Um, Prairie Bomb. Yeah. Prairie Artisan House. But Stones. Maybe not as good as the rest of those, but so well priced. You can get a bottle for like two and a half, three dollars. Well, you can get this in the six. I think the six pack of yes. this is for like, like fifteen bucks. bucks. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. See here, I see you got a beer deal with me on that one. No, I think no, here, I think it's here like sixteen ninety nine or something. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. It might it might be like fifteen to eighteen in in yeah. this neck of the woods too. But I mean, you're talking again less than three dollars a bottle, and uh, for something that you know is damn quality, it's a damn good beer. Yeah, well worth it as a beer to actually check out. Um, and they say, perfect match for simple sugar or butter cookies, apple pie, or vanilla ice cream. And a lot of people don't realize some of these beers, you can match up nicely with desserts as well. So mm -hmm. I've had I've had some of these stouts with, like, uh, some of the fudge cakes and stuff like that. Really nice little matchup with the parents. But the uh, second one, which I've heard about but never had, because I don't think we get it really out in this area, the Black Forest Cake from Coronado Brewing. So this, is, this is a barrel aged imperial stout with cocoa, vanilla, and cherries. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. Best matching it up with cheesecake, chocolate pot de creme, or chocolate truffles, 9% ABV. I, I, I sent you that Thin Man Brewery locally here that was the forever cordial cocoa mm -hmm. nibs and cherry, but minus the vanilla. So probably in the same vein. Of parents, I, I haven't found a beer yet where you can go wrong with cocoa nuts. I'm just saying, and I like the cocoa. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> especially when it's like 14 or 15. Yeah, <laughs> and then the third one here is from Lost Abbey Brewing, which I think a lot of people know about as well. And it's the No the Abbey, a holiday mm -hmm. brown ale, 8.5 ABV that is malty and caramel laden at its base with mouth mouth watering notes of allspice. They give it a unique charm. Great with sweet potato cheesecake, pumpkin pie, or carrot cake. Excuse me, sweet potato cheesecake? Like, that just hangs out on the shelves here. Yeah. I didn't even know that existed. Sweet potato. I mean, there's all kinds of different. It's like, who is your cook in there? Is that Emerald yeah. back there putting these things together? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you guys just happen to, you know, run into some sweet potato cheesecake, I mean, you know, whatever. What? You mean you don't fix that every week? Yeah, if you said just sweet, just sweet potato pie, like okay, but like cheesecakes, and like eleven. Now you're getting crazy. That's crazy talk. <laughs> and then number four, 
from Ballast Point, the High West victory at sea, took the Imperial Porter with coffee and vanilla and aged it in High West bourbon and rye barrels. And I would say yes, please, to that 12% ABV. Incredible with cheesecake and perfect for tiramisu or brownies. There's also a peanut butter victory at sea. Yes. Got. And so, that would be oh, wow. in the cart. Just get in. You Just had that, Joe? In. No. So what I was going to say is shout out to Bum. Yeah, some more comments will read maybe like halfway mark of this mm-hmm. of this list, but he had the peanut butter. He actually got it from a local distributor. He had it in a crawler, and he he one of he thought it was one of the best beers he had. The peanut butter bottle showed up here, and the High West Victory at Sea is supposed to show up here in the next couple of weeks, I believe. So I'm so pumped up. I've never been as pumped up for a Bow's Point beer in my life. <laughs> How about you guys? You guys, you guys, you guys think you're gonna get it? Sorry about that coconut victory. See, I think you were pumped up about that. I still, I still haven't tried it. I just, oh, yeah, oh, believe oh, it or not. To try that one. I know, I know, it's on me. It's on me, bros. Hashtag that's on me. <laughs> so, what do you got in comments? Ah, uh, well, just Todd and then, uh, Eric. Anything about the ballast point? You guys gonna try? Has peanut butter showed up there? Is the high west one showing up there? You guys gonna try it out? Uh, Bell, I, we get Bell's Point beers, but I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen either one of those. We may I, we, yeah, I have it on the shelf, and I just pass by it too. Yeah, the peanut butter one just showed up this week, so you guys should probably see oh. it soon if you're going to see it. So, yeah. but the high keep west an eye out for it. Yeah, yeah, definitely keep your eye on it. Came out, I believe. So yeah. Um. So we have actually quite a few comments after Mr. Angus Wangus about human DNA and the Taco Bell meat. We have Teku Murray, <laughs> Teku Murray, a good friend of mine. You were. Uh, part of the Canadian crew and really good guy, but he's also a troll that I you know, would like to crush like this. Just crush um, he <laughs> says, no, hash- he's "Wait a rear title to start so he can really get after you." Oh, he's, it's gonna be a great time. He says, "Hashtag pray for Joe." Yeah, I know that's that's the running right. <laughs> Hashtag where in the world is average Joe's beard? That's a good question. <laughs> um, <laughs> Earth from Jody Show to Earth, uh, Earth, yeah, Earth Man. He has Earth Man, but everyone refers to him as Earth. He says, "Cheers, gentlemen." This is Earth from the occasional Jody Show. So cheers, cheers to Earth. Cheers, brother. He drinks really good stuff. Uh, you were, aka Taku Murray, aka hashtag Pray for Joe, hashtag Worth is my beard and all that stuff. He is in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, so right across the river from Detroit. He goes a lot of Detroit stuff, a lot of Michigan stuff, Eric. So he also says, "Go Lions." Go Lions! He is a Lions fan. So. <laughs> yeah. Two Lions fan. We have two Lions fans in this whole realm of the uh, Beer Flow show. One in the chat, one in this actual show itself. That's too many beer. That's way too many Lions fans. There was a time when that would not ever happen. Was- yeah, that's crazy. A lot of Lions fans. <laughs> well, there was a time you would say, oh, we know all the Lions fans that's ever existed. <laughs> <laughs> here's the question. Here, here, here's the, not the question. Here, You could be the Browns. At this point, oh, you were the Browns a couple years ago, we like 10 years ago. Please, Cleveland, please get a win. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, keep on losing. Let us salt in our old 0 and 16. <laughs> <laughs> um, Redbeard said thoughts on the net neutrality and sanity today, and then Count Drunkula says it's propaganda training, Redbeard. And then uh, he says that makes me very sad because it could be very possibly true. So, um I don't think that neutrality is, is great. And I think them I doing what they did today, is, yeah, it's terrible yeah. what they did today. Hopefully it's tied up in court for many years and uh, we don't ever have to actually see it come to fruition. But, you know, we only have so much power. Not much we can do about it other than sign petitions and call, you know, different people and whatnot. But, you know, hopefully Congress steps in or there's a lawsuit or something because there's not a lot of good that can come from it. But even if it gets instituted at some point, it's going to be a long time before I think you see the effects of it. So, no. It's not a great thing. I not mean, good. a free and open internet is what we all want. You don't want anybody to really control it, I don't think. I mean, that's how Al Gore created it, right? So, yeah, I mean, Al, Gore, or Al Gore created it. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just to be attention here. This should be clear. It's supposed to be free for everybody. <laughs> According to Al Gore, this earth was created in 1957. So, yeah. <laughs> Trust everything he says. Um, Bum says, avoid the Taco Bell, quote, soylent green quesadillas, unquote, at all costs. Soylent green, nice <laughs> reference. Nice reference. <laughs> nice. reference. Um, he continues with, he just found bombers of the 2016 charred Coca Vesa. Which is the the, the barrel aged 
Coco Bay's up from last year. How much were how much were they? It started to pick that up yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So so my comment, yeah, and and that I think that's common from all of us is how much did you pay and did you buy one? I guess is the uh, <laughs> the question. Because I I've I had that beer last year. I'm going to untap to check it out, but uh. I remember really enjoying it, but it was, I want to say it was like a 500 milliliter bottles, bottle, so like 16 uh, ounces. It was like 14 to $18, so it was a really expensive. It was good, but I, I, pr- if you take price into consideration, you're paying $3 for a 12-ounce bottle. Yeah, I could have got one yesterday. What was the price? I could have got one yesterday, and it was fifteen ninety nine. Wow. Yeah. I think that's the that's the lone issue. Like it's it's a like I said from experience, I can honestly say it was a really good beer. But if you're talking price consideration and availability and everything taken into consideration, yeah, maybe once to try it, <laughs> but past that, I don't know. But you know, they still got some of those rumpkin and pumpkins for six ninety nine here. What I what I went into the Great Lakes tonight. All right, so what I'm going to do. You haven't bought the rest of them. 2016 yet? edition, but I mean, it was still pretty good. Yeah, so all I need you to do is for that beer mail for my channel, you might want to go pick up one of those each for me. I could do that. <laughs> Sounds like a great time. Don't sell it yet till you got your channel ready. Doesn't matter. It's not going to matter if I have my channel rental ready in the next two months or two years or whatever. Those things are going to age perfectly. And for seven <laughs> bucks. This geez. is for you, Joe, from the seller. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, Bum says the peanut butter victory C is still not available in Pittsburgh. Like I said, you got his crawler from my uh, Bum. Correct me if I'm wrong. It was like a local distributor, one of his buddies, and he was drinking it on Jody's show, and he was he was he was loving it. But it's it's not available in the Pittsburgh area as of right now. He says in bottles. That is. So I mean, he got it on. Like I said, I think he got it from a local distributor. Got it in a crawler uh, locally. So that's cool. Um, Go Lions says Eric. Go Lions says Count Drunkula. I believe he's trolling, but maybe he really likes the Lions. So that's three Lions fans. Hey, I'm I don't scared. care. I'll take it. I'm scared for the for the <laughs> channel at this point. Like this, not even the show. This chat with three Overload. Lions fans around. Yeah, it's not good. I mean, sorry. Are, are the Lions in first place in their division? Exactly. Oh, they're, no. <laughs> they're behind Minnesota. <laughs> but they're a wild card, wild card position right now, right? Yeah. They, well, they're in in the hunt. In the hunt with the Seahawks, which means maybe if you win out for Detroit, that means no. <laughs> Power of positivity here. Come on now. Um, and then Bum finishes with he bought one of the the, the char choke uh, Coca Vezas for fifteen dollars, and in parentheses he says no rod discount. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Should have said, do you know Raj? <laughs> they instantly just cut any price in half. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all for comments for right now. But uh, yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, like I said, the, again, for personal experience, the Chocove is a chard. It's a, it's a damn awesome beer. I'd highly recommend everyone checking out once, but it is expensive. So going into it, you have to realize you're paying basically a dollar per ounce for the beer. And you kind of, unless you're Rod, you might pay like, you know, a dollar for seven ounces, whatever the case may be. Um, but, you know, it's an expensive beer. And it, it is it is a step up on the base one, I thought. But I don't know about enough to charge five times the amount per bottle. So, yeah. Yeah. You live and learn. Yeah. But, um, so let's see. So back on the list, the number five beer is Ghost Magic. And this is a collaboration between Cellar 3 and Green Flash. Says Brawny Barrel Age Belgian style stout, eleven point three percent ABV. Pours from the bottle almost like a syrup and gives off a heady aroma of molasses, chocolate, plum, and raisins. Um, great for paired with vanilla pound cake, vanilla ice cream. Says truffle. Think they meant truffle or oatmeal cookies. And it says the the smooth body delivers concentrated flavors of vanilla, dry black cherry. Dry stone fruit and coffee. Trifle, trifle is, is oh, is it trifle? Thin dessert made with fruit. A thin okay. layer of sponge fingers soaked in cherry, or another fortified wine and custard. I, I, I thought the same thing with you, but I'm like, I remember trifle being like something. Um, but you, you know, you're, you're more upper scale than I am. I haven't been to. No, I just, I just I, googled I, it. I haven't been to trifle. Yeah, I just googled <laughs> it. I don't. I've never had it. I probably never will have it. But like, I love all these. Listen. 
I'm fat. I like food. I like desserts. But a lot of these desserts are like way above my pay grade. My pay grade. The ability of at obtaining any of this stuff, like you know, give me some sweet potato pie, sweet yeah. potato and freaking cheesecake. I don't know what's happening. Like that's 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 crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> that's the overload right there. But, but honestly, the description of that beer sounds yeah. amazing. It sounds phenomenal. And of course, Green Flash has some good things. I've never heard of Cellar Three before. So, what were you saying, Todd? What, what was that? I said Cray Cray. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's cray -cray. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Green Flash and uh, was it Cellar Three? They did a. Um, I want to say they did a collaboration of a barrel aged beer and they released it in like Green Flash distribution areas like a year ago. I can't remember what it was, but um, I think I had it. I don't know. I forget at this point. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, I just did, a, I got to upload. I just did a beer review. It'll be uploaded somewhere next week or so. It was a collab that I got on a beer between Heavy Seas and Cigar City. Yeah. Freaking phenomenal. So this I've got that one. Yeah, just a little tea. I haven't tried it yet, yeah, but I've got it in the fridge. Yeah, you're going to really like that one. And then we just had, was Todd knows oh, here, yeah, we got Mantry here. Mantry is also doing well with Heavy Seas. Oh, really? One of those is out, too. One of my buddies got that one. What kind of, what style is that one? Um, I, didn't, I don't remember which one that one is, but if you look on Untapped, probably, under Heavy Seas, it's the uh, Pirate Ship or whatever. Uh -huh. Or partnerships uh, series, I think you'll see it on there. Okay. I, I want to say I saw uh, DJ over at DJ's uh, BrewTube. He reviewed that. I'm pretty sure because he does a lot of hot, heavy seas beers. Because right their backyard, yeah, yeah. Hey, Rob, uh, have you had the uh, have you had the Biggie IPA from Listerman? No, no, not yet. Have you had, have you had that one? Yeah, my brother uh, just come back from, you know, his fiance lives in Cincinnati, so he brought me a four pack back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. I had one last night. There's so many beers that are here. It's just like somebody's asking about the one I got from Braxton, a 66 Pearl. And I haven't even had it yet. It's in the basement right now, but it's got that barrel aged uh, Belgian blonde or Belgian golden ale they did in the barrels. And it's, I'm looking forward to trying that one too, but. As you know, my cellar, it's only a third of what Joe's cellar is apparently, but there's just a lot of stuff in there. So right now, over the next month or so, I'll probably get a lot of the pale ales, like the stuff that Joe sent me, a lot of those, get those reviews out there. Yeah, you better get on those, the super fresh, super oh, fresh they're, rod. They're right in the front of the row in the frizz, right in the front. Yeah, just the other, the pretty sure the other half um, are what you really want to go to, because they're, okay. they're like a couple of weeks old, so. I got to eat the sponge. Yeah, if you wait too long, you'll just have to pour them down the drain. Yeah. Yeah, I mean if it's like six weeks old, I'd probably just pour it outside. <laughs> no, whatever. Or if you want, uh, you can just package them up and send them to me. I don't yeah. care. I'll drink them. Well, well I'm already sending them to Todd, so if you want <laughs> doubles, like he's on he's good to go. But yeah, the sponge I think I also think the sponge candy that I sent you in addition to the Imperial sponge candy, I think the sponge candy, if you just like throw it in the fridge or just in your freaking cupboard, uh, it'd be all right. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Not gonna melt. <laughs> And then uh, the next one, number six, is Eight Mary Merman from Carl Strauss. Uh, mm -hmm. this, the person that did this said this was the only triple IPA they tasted for the holidays. Comes in at 11.8% ABV. Drinks almost like it comes from a cask, something you definitely want at your holiday table. Now, he said this one, good pairing with a honey glazed ham, roasted sweet potatoes, or a pumpkin pie. So something a little more easier to find at some of the tables. Than the uh, sweet potato cheesecake. <laughs> Who come, who's coming up with this list? Because I've never heard of half of these beers. Well, well, I've heard of the. Here's the thing, and, and that's a that's a good point, Todd. And to piggyback your comment, I would say segue. We're gonna we're gonna segue, but also piggyback at the same time. We're gonna, we're gonna piggyback segue. But um, <laughs> Carl Strauss, like I, I know they're a good uh, brewer, and I think they're in California. I want to say like San Diego area. Yeah, and they uh. Like a lot of their stuff is super local. Like you're not getting it on the East Coast, so it's like one of these lists where and this is the problem I have with lists. Not to go on a tangent because I won't. I won't. I'll spare everyone because you don't want to hear a, a beardless Joe say dumb shit, say enough dumb shit. But like these local breweries, a list like this, you should at least keep it regional, if not national, so people can actually pick it up. If if there's a list like this, like we're not going to see half of these beers on the East Coast, so it's like. 
it doesn't make any sense to me. It's just kind of yeah. Well, this one was actually done. Yeah, I didn't. It was a San Diego magazine. I mean, really. I okay, should, okay, okay. I retract everything. I should, I should just send a list to Holly because she's in San Diego, right? So she'll be able to see all of these there. Um, I haven't seen Holly's Happy Hour do a review in a while. I need to find out what's going on there. Oh, yeah, Maybe taking a so. break. You throw a tweet out to her. See what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, tweet her up. Big tweets. <laughs> <laughs> but the other one they had after that was also a stone. It's a Mikhail. I don't know if you've had that one before. 13 and a half ABV espresso imperial Russian stout aged in bourbon barrels. No, it sounds amazing. Yeah. Deep flavors, uh, fresh roasted coffee, chocolate, and bourbon make this stout extra special. Beer can stand as a dessert of its own, but would be awesome with pecan pie or bread pudding. Pecan. I had a chance pie. to get that one on Black Friday, actually. But you didn't get Did it? You? No, I didn't get it. I bought too much other shit. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, Todd in the land of, oh, all these super whales, no big deal. I just said, I got to buy this. <laughs> well, Todd gets a lot of stuff from here from where I'm at, trickle down to where he's Actually, I can, like, actually, I think I can still pick it up on uh, one of the liquor, local now, liquor stores. So. Now, would you call I that? Might, I just might have to now. <laughs> now, Todd, what, do you think it, do you think it would pair well with bread pudding or white bread pudding? Gargonzola. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of your blue cheese, baby. Some, some of your Limburger. Some of that Gouda, baby. Some of that smoked Gouda. Friday night. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not to the star cake level. It's too early for that. It's too early for star cake. Sorry, that's on me. That's on me, bros. <laughs> the, the beard, the beard is here. Usually they control me. No beard. Was it last week we did uh, looking for Ric Flair? So oh yeah, maybe we'll have to have. <laughs> I'm looking for some horsemen. How many? About four. This might, <laughs> this might be a call from heaven type night. So <laughs> um, then it has Santa's little helper from Port Bruin, nine point nine Imperial Stout, annual holiday offering. I've never had that, but uh, when I went down to hang out with Paul from PA Brew News. Um, we went to a couple bottle shops and they actually had that on the shelf and I didn't buy it because it was, it's one of those beers where it was on the East coast and they don't really distribute to the East coast. So it was like this place had it marked up and it was like 500 milliliter bottle for like $18. And I was like, yeah, I'm good. But uh, it sounded interesting anyway. Yeah. It says rich multi coffee and caramel concoction that does surprisingly well with foods of all kinds. Try pairing it with braised or roasted burger beef. Or the sweeter side, <laughs> vanilla cake, a cinnamon roll, or a chocolate mousse. I can get my hand on cinnamon roll. I don't know about. I don't know about what was that braised. What was that braised beef burger? Like I maybe <laughs> braised or roasted burger beef. Oh, uh, a roasted burger you beef. Braised? You ever had a braised? <laughs> I have. I, I, I have. Um, cinnamon roll though seems very easily attainable. Of all the desserts. <laughs> that or like vanilla ice cream. But it's like no little Debbie cinnamon roll. We want a real no, cinnamon we'll, roll. Yeah, we'll go we'll go get like an actual cinnamon roll. We can do that. <laughs> um and then there's here's your damn stout from Benchmark with sweet dry fruit and coffee in the nose. This Imperial Stout 10% ABV delivers delicious chocolate, coffee, molasses, and vanilla flavors in a full body beer. <laughs> Not too heavy. This is a great beer to pair with brownies. Chocolate layer cake or coffee ice cream. It would even be this person's choice for Christmas for a morning breakfast with waffles, bacon, and hazelnut maple syrup. Was it benchmark? Benchmark Berlin, yeah. Yeah, they're on the same thing. I've, I've never heard of them until right now. Look, if you can get a beer into the breakfast mix, it's not bad. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> and then the last one on the list was from Mother Earth Brewing, Four Seasons Winter, Asian Bourbon Barrels, 12% ABV, Imperial Brown Ale. Heavy, uh, heady aromas of vanilla, bourbon, and banana on the nose with sweet and silky flavors of caramel, vanilla, bourbon, and a hint of raisins. Satisfy satisfyingly rich for a medium body beer. Try pairing with shortbread, stolen, or gingerbread. Even a perfect match for fruitcake, it says. So who eats fruitcake under the age of like 50? <laughs> I've never even ate it. I've never <laughs> been a fan of fruitcake. I never had it in my life. I've had it. How did you eat that? I actually, I don't mind fruitcake. Um, my family kind of grew up on it. So it's, it's just, it's what you would think. Like, yeah. it's simple. It's it's an acquired taste, as a lot of people would say. Um, but, uh, for it, baby. Fruitcake yeah, but that, is so small, but yet weighs so much. Yeah, yeah. It's like you could kill someone with a loaf of it. It's, <laughs> Not somebody else's oh. food cake. <laughs> but did you say bananas in there for like an aroma for an imperial style? Like that sounds yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, Maybe they're using some Belgian yeast straight daddy. <laughs> so that was the list of those beers. But yeah, that was out of the San Diego magazine. 
So yeah, so I like I said, I retract the whole thing about whatever. Um, about you know basically shitting on this list because it is San Diego magazine. I get it. So it's going to be very uh, heavy on the San Diego breweries centric around that. So I get it. I get it. Uh, my apologies. Yeah. Not really. No one's going to watch it. <laughs> San Diego. From San Diego magazine. They don't. And care. Apparently, there's more pot infused beers that are now popping up as well. But of course, none of them are THC. So. No oh boy. Just trying to give you a little bit more of that dankness to it, I guess. Oh baby, all of them dankness. <laughs> Never enough. I just had a feeling. Like, I think about that. I think like Lagunitas should be holding that part of the market down. <laughs> I mean, it, it'd be the perfect brewery for that. Yep, I agree. Are you guys doing any advent calendars out there? Are you guys doing any in here? I see like people popping up beer advent calendars here and there. I think if I actually had a channel, I'd consider it. Yeah. The problem with advent calendars is. You don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know if it's gonna be like, like anything like a box of chocolate, like Vor's Gump. You just not know what you right. get. Oh, listen, <laughs> listen, I lost my beard. That was gonna tell you Forrest Gump. I feel like I'm more bubba in the situation. Um no, but uh it's one of those things where Advent Cow, you don't know what you're gonna get and you usually pay a premium. And when you're paying a premium for something, I, I feel like it usually doesn't live up to expectations. And I've seen a bunch of guys I follow uh, as beer tubers, they've been doing advent calendars, and it's just like they don't seem happy with it. At least half of the beers they're drinking. So it's like, eh. I'm just mm. thinking, like, what if you get an advent calendar and you got some, you know, for lack of a better word, dick that put it together? And mm -hmm. they're like, just, who would throw a can of butt just to freak this person out? That'd be <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Day six, and it's like Budweiser. <laughs> well, well, I do. I do know there's a local, and by local, I mean there's a place about an hour away in Rochester, New York, and they do their own advent calendar. It's like a bottle shop that does it. So they wrap them individually and in like wrapping paper, you know, different like colored wrapping paper. So it's not like you pull it out of the box and all that stuff. And I know they throw awesome beers in there. Like the last couple of years, they've thrown like Bell's Black Note in there. Uh, they've thrown Bourbon County, KBS, like, you know, some of the bigger, well-known uh, barrel-aged beers. So you get some. But I remember the one year, I forgot what they threw in, like Carlsberg or some, some kind of joke one. And people got angry at it. But it's like, look, if I think the price was like 100 bucks for the 24 beers, which, you know, what is that? Not even $4, $4 a, a bottle. Yeah. They're getting stuff like KBS and Bourbon County and this and that and Bell's Black Note, which usually go for like $8, $7, 8 a bottle. If they threw it at Carlsberg, I would appreciate the troll in that situation. Like I'd be like, "That's fantastic, right?" Like, come on, um, hey, baby, that's, mm -hmm. that's right up my alley, Joe. Yeah, no, I would, I, <laughs> Eric wouldn't appreciate the troll. Eric would probably be like, "This is like the top upper echelon beer in this heaven calendar." Be Carlsberg. Yeah, Eric would just roll with it. Yeah. He would probably throw KBS against his wall and just shatter it as he. But that's like the, the funny thing because for people that aren't as familiar that might be watching with advent calendars, usually they're a craft beer. So if you put something mm -hmm. in there that's not, that can definitely get people. But if you kind of find, I mean, do they have like a macro advent calendar? Is that something some breweries ever tried, I wonder? No, no offense to Eric in the situation, but let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm not offended by it. Well, I just think it would be a ripoff, right? Like, because if you, well, if you'd you have a lower price on it, but if someone's like a macro drinker, you could put in a Miller Light and Coors Light and Bud Light. And if, if I had to pay more than a dollar per beer for that advent calendar, I'd probably choke someone out because I feel <laughs> like. like <laughs> <you get> away, <laughs> <that's it. laughs> well, I mean, it's like. Almost any macro beer you buy in the States, it's like a dollar per beer max most of the time. So it's like if there's 24 beers in this advent calendar and I'm paying like 40 bucks, I'd kill somebody. Yeah, but if I might married, kill somebody. You can't get Natty Daddy, but I ain't got Natty Daddy in the advent calendar. Yeah. Eight, <laughs> 8 right there. Now, now you're just upsetting Lance. The 8% eight, the eight one. You're just upsetting Lance. <laughs> Lance is watching this and shaking his fist. Not the baby Natty Daddy. Old girl man one. Yeah, no. Jack, no, Jay. <laughs> Daddy, Daddy is fantastic. <laughs> well, that's like a lot of the beer stories stuff that I saw out there. It wasn't really too much out of that. I saw that. Um, I guess there's kind of some stuff with the whole uh, was it the menopause beer? I think they did. We talked about it a while back. I guess so that's yeah, kind that's of a, that's a, that's some a, stuff that's happening there. Yeah. I saw the beer named after Beyonce that. Apparently, she made him stop brewing because she wasn't impressed with them using her name or like this. So that might be something. I, I could see Beyonce <laughs> drinking like a craft beer and being happy with it, no matter yeah. what it is. <laughs> yeah. 
It'd have to be a nice full body one, though. That's yeah, it'd have to be like champagne ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> full, full body. Full. Like the Millennium beer from Sam Adams. She'd be like, all right, that's good times. <laughs> I don't know why she had a deep voice like that, but who knows? <laughs> I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe she's a, it's a real voice. Who knows? <laughs> I like to wear RuPaul or something, you know. Yeah, maybe, maybe, well, hey. <laughs> <laughs> apologize, apologize. I have Maddie Daddy in the calendar, so you know it happens. <laughs> you got too much Maddie Daddy. So has anybody said you look like who's reviews yet out there? Is anybody? Responding? No, no, they, because you, because you're wrong. <laughs> Rod, no big deal, Rod. You're wrong. No, we have a bunch of comments though. Like, uh, fire away. Well, a lot of people are talking to one another, so maybe not as many as we uh, think, or many as I think. Uh, Mr. Angus Wagner says truffle. Uh, I think he was you know, referring to the the whole when you said trifle, but thought it was truffle. Totally trifle. I thought it was also truffle, but it's trifle. Um, Drunken one. Drunken one says hi, gang. How's it going? Hey, Drunken one. Hey, what's going on, Drunken brother? brother? Drunk one, have you drank any of the beer that I sent you? I hope so, because like a lot of them were IPA. You probably should drink them at some point. I shouldn't eat them. He drank the Heineken. Yeah, he drank the shit out of the Heineken. He was like the first beer he drank. But drunk one, no worries about reviews or drinking them. I just drink the shit out. Enjoy them. Just enjoy them. But drink them soon so you can actually enjoy them. Um, Redbeard uh, refers says, hey, man. And then drunken one says, Joe, what the F? Where's your beard? Uh, I believe it's out in the garbage I believe, at this point. <laughs> <laughs> the vast majority is in the garbage outside. Some eighty-year-old man out in South LA. Yes, yeah. disappointing your fans, Joe. Disappointing your fans. Yeah. You could have sold that hair for toupee. I, I should have done it for charity, right? I don't even know if that's a thing. There you um, go. That would have been good. On the tenth, Chris. Good buddy of ours says, less beard equal less corruption. That's what you think. <laughs> or like less beard equals all the corruption. <laughs> Uh, he also says, uh, hashtag pray for goatee. <laughs> Changing it up, will you? <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then Craig says, corruption remains. <laughs> uh, Drunken Wong apparently got a kegerator because he says he's admiring his new kegerator. So that's cool. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, nice. I've actually looked at a few of those. Yeah, no. I'm thinking about actually getting one. Jesus. Everyone's buying a keg right here, apparently, right now. I'm <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> well, I'm thinking about you know buying my own so I can do like the little five gallon barrels there. I think Ty, I thought Ty had one too out there in San Fran. Hmm. Uh, Chris from on the tenth continues. At least the goatee is coolish. No baby face show. I try to. I try to listen. I subject people to a lot of things. Baby face show, not one of them. <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> Um, drunken one in one of his drunken states apparently says, um, Joe sent me one of those Great Lakes beers. I haven't tried it yet. Here's the thing, drunken one. I totally didn't. No Great Lake beers your way. I'm pretty sure if we go if we go look at the uh, the uh, unboxing video, I don't think there's any Great Lakes beers. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I actually sent you. Great Lakes. I don't think there's. If there is, that's on me. If it isn't, that's on you. Either way, it's on somebody. Um, <laughs> Drunken One says he's going to give it a try soon. I don't know what he's referring to. The Heineken? Maybe all the beers that I sent him? I don't know. I hope so. Um, and then Redbeard says he's going to record one of his daily drink vlogs with you guys in the background. Well, condolences to your channel, Redbeard. <laughs> <laughs> I, <don't>, <laughs> I would not nice advise that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good entertainment will be in the backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> Any more comments? I was at nope. Blackout Style treating you, Todd. Yeah. How is it? It's good. Not too uh us as a lot of the Imperial Stouts, but it's it's nice. Almost kind of just above a porter, but not quite Imperial Stout for me anyway, it seems. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but, it, but it's, it's good. I mean, it's it's solid. I'm Sorry, it Todd. A... Your palate's a little bit better than it was. We understand, Todd. We get it. Get it. Actually, probably not. That's probably why it's <laughs> not so good. It's actually a good one. It's actually pretty good. I see here. I really enjoy Blackout style a lot. Have you guys had the Ohio City? I'm gonna crack open to that. The yeah, South. I've had it. 
a good one. I got one of those that I don't have. I got one out of the stairs to do a review at some point. I ain't seen that, but I don't think. It's a no, six and old comes out in December, I believe, for November. Okay. At the end of the year. Of course, I don't get Great Lakes over here anyway. I had to go to Louisville to get those. Actually, my brother picked them up in Cincinnati for me while he was there. They don't distribute to Indiana? They used to, but I don't, I don't think they do anymore. I get I, it. Go, go ahead, Joe. No, you go ahead. Okay. I get a, I get almost everything they brew up here. Same here. I, I think I, I don't want to say they pulled out of areas back in the day because we haven't, you know, went through the whole thing yet. Yeah. And I haven't read the Wikipedia or the history because I didn't do any <laughs> research. <laughs> but uh, so I heard, probably, so they're I probably like one of those breweries that kind of like maybe distributed in certain areas and then maybe scaled it back once they realized they couldn't take care of the areas they were already in. Like Dogfish had to that before where they're like. They expanded so quickly, but then quickly, no pun intended, realized that they couldn't they couldn't distribute to like you know five new states because they couldn't even keep the people happy in their current distribution area. And maybe Great Lakes had that going. So yeah, we, we were one of those for Dogfish Day. Also, we had it, then they pulled out. Now we've got it again. How's that Commodore Perry treating your rod? Fruity and citrusy. Bitter, hit you in the mouth, punch you in the nose. Kind of like hanging out with Ike Turner. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, TV Turner somewhere is not happy about that. <laughs> Too soon? Maybe not soon enough. <laughs> it was how we all was like, no. what? That was, that was pretty fantastic. Uh, no, you've you've had, you've had this one before. You know how good this is. This is a nice, delicious IPA like, from them. Like I said, yeah, though, the, the one, one thing, the one thing for me for that is because, like I said, they try to brew in the English style. I always get like more of an earthy note from it, but it it it, it has it has similarities to a lot of like American IPAs, but it has the slight differences where it's like it's unique. Even though it's really not unique because there are English IPAs out there, not a lot of American breweries brew English IPAs, so it's like mm, it's just a little different, a little tasty. I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah, this one. Has a little bit more of a fruitier thing than usual, but the one thing about this, every time I had it that I really liked, it has a real good mouth coating effect on it. So you really get it all over the mouth as far as the effect and the tingling and really brings everything alive in it. So, and a great duration of flavor usually with this one. What's the ABV on that? I want to say that's like seven and a half. Seven, seven. Seven point seven, mm. just like seven, seven. See, you know baby? Seven and seven, baby. Back in the 90s, seven and seven was a go to. <laughs> I'm going to be terrible hanging over. <laughs> Man, yeah, back in the '90s, Long Island Iced Tea, when I used to bartend, or bartended, we'd actually use four alcohol. So you had four in there. Then what the recipes they use now are usually two or maybe three. So it's kind of weakened the Long Island Iced Tea. So. Growing up in the nineties, we we did a, we we had a lot more stuff happening. D here's the thing with all the things that are going on in craft beer. Has anybody seen a brewery, whether it's local or not, try to replicate a Long Island iced tea in a Long Island iced tea in beer form? I haven't, no. no. That'd be interesting to I see. Have not. Uh, I, did you do I, that in beer form now? I mean, I don't know if that uh, well, I just picked up Evil Twin. Uh, they brewed. Um, they, they came out with their lemonade beer series. So they had a lemonade IPA, then they did a pink lemonade lemonade IPA. And a couple of weeks ago, they had the Arnold Palmer, the half iced tea, half lemonade IPA. And I no have it in my fridge, and I have to try it. But yeah, iced tea in beer form seems like very hard to replicate. Yeah. But I'm gonna be curious to see if they even do Arnold Palmer, Arnold Palmer justice because I don't know how you're gonna do that in IPA form. Yeah. But sure, I'm gonna want to try it now, so I'm looking forward to that. We're checking out. I just know Long Island. I see they they've done so many different cocktail recipes in beer form. So many different breweries. It's like you know, you think a Long Island iced tea would have been done by now. I'm I sure just, it has. I just saw this one story on here out of Connecticut. Beer pong death wins family fifteen point six million. So. It's kind of it's like the family of a Stratford man who went flying out of a fourth floor window to his death after being accused of cheating at beer pong has been awarded fifteen point six million. 
So you, wait, wait, what? So <laughs> you were playing beer pong, and they said this guy was cheating. Which I don't even know how you cheat at beer pong. Either you put it in the cup or you don't. And somehow <laughs> right. he, so he jumped. Up, he, I, he, I don't know. He just said flying. Either he jumped or he was pushed. He was helped. Might have been shooting night there. I don't know. But somehow, oh, this guy <laughs> was in the long window. Yeah. And then up dying. The murder is the case. awarded the family fifteen point six million over the death. Oh, this is kind of a weird type story there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just yeah, that's kind of bizarre. Yeah, so it was just interesting when I saw it there. Like it just went flying out the window. It's you know? a lot of money. money. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of money. Wait, what they sue on? What grounds did they sue on? Uh, let me pull it up here. The window <laughs> wasn't secure or something. I don't know. Where, where should, do we, should we get some? Jeopardy music going on right <laughs> After a day of deliberation, six jurors came to the decision. Uh, well, he did have a four-year-old daughter, so I think that was probably taken into account because she now, I think it was a single dad, it looks like. Oh. Um, they said, however, how they would collect the award is up in the air. They said this other guy, Chandler and Gonzalez, Play guilty to first degree manslaughter and conspiracy to commit first degree assault for Martinez's death. So you um, push, push. Now, he was flying, but it's something where he was thrown out. And like, yeah, okay, they won't kill him. You're four fours up. You just gonna throw him out? Like that's not no. murder, or but it's hard to get a murder thing nowadays. I I would say if the man killed himself for being accused of cheating at beer pong, there was definitely deeper problems going yeah. on that. But uh, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Yeah, yeah. So it said. Um, it said after a day, uh, after a day of deliberation, the six jurors appeared agreed. Apparently agreed, ordering the rival pong players Kyle Gonzalez, Matthew Chandler, and Stephanie Dwyer to pay the award. So I don't know if we get six million out of these people or not. But it says two of the guys were sentenced, but then it's like Dwyer fled the state. And believed to be living in Florida, so she's in the U.S. and you still can't find her. It's not like it's the Unabomber in the woods. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know if she has these survival skills that she's hiding in the woods, but if you know she's in Florida, shouldn't you kind of pick her up? <laughs> Just kind of a weird story that I saw there. Yep. <clears throat> Um, got a couple more comments here that we'll read. Uh, Redbeard uh, confirms that while we'll, we will be on his uh, daily drink vlog in the background, we'll be muted. So that's a positive. On the big screen. Uh, Chris on the 10th says, you're doing an after show chat? We usually chat a little bit afterwards offline. I don't think uh, Rod usually puts it back online, though. Yeah, I think last week we did. What did we do? Was that after show? Was that no, show? that was Friday night. You and I... Yeah, you, 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 uh, I think you posted a, um, Impromptu, unbo right. an unboxing for the beer I sent you. Then we did the Maudit. I oh, did the Maudit. Yeah. yeah, that led to Dylan. Yeah. Um, Count Drunkula asked a great question that no one knows the answer to for about five years. He says, Joe, when are you going to start doing reviews? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be soon and it will be soon. So keep your eye out. 2027. That's yeah. why you got the new beard. You know, you cut it down so you can be ready for his close up. That was theorized by uh, Chris on the tenth, and uh, even though he's right, he's still wrong. Uh, drunken, drunken one confirms my suspicions. He says, "You're right, Joe. No Great Lakes. That's right. I didn't send you any Great Lakes. I was pretty, com I was pretty confident of that." Um, Chris, Chris, big thumbs up. I don't know, big thumbs up to. When I'm going to start doing my reviews, or the fact that uh, Eric responded with "not sure" on the tenth, up to Rod about the after-show chat, but big thumbs up. So, Chris with a big thumbs up. Um, Drunken one also says, "Have any of you tried uh, leg and?" Well, he said it in the soother, like the most southern way possible. He said, "Have y'all tried Laganita's little something?" <laughs> Will I have. I, I have not. I've seen him, but I haven't tried it. Where he typed it or something that you kind of put that together? Well, no. He was just like, "Have y'all tried Lagunitas little something out? Like, have y'all done that?" I've had little something and little something something. Mm -hmm. Both very good. Yeah. 
a little something, something's a little better for me, but they're both. Tasty. Two months, I'll have Lagunitas here too for the beer fest. Oh my god! Hopefully, yeah. bring that Westfield Stout. Have you guys here. seen their? Uh, have, you guys have you guys seen their uh, coffee stout? The will it will I eight barrel yeah, age? Here. I want to get it though. Yo, it's totally right now in my fridge. You got it already there. I do a review on nobody's channel. I still got a drink. Let's do it. Let's do it on my channel. How's that? The socket to me from Lagunitas. I haven't drank that one yet. I had that one a couple uh, week, couple weeks, a month ago or so. It's not too bad. Nice. Lag Here's the thing. We'll, we're, we're seriously, we got to do Lagunitas at some point soon because I feel they're the best. I agree. If they, if they said like the boxing MMA world best pound for pound. Mm -hmm. rate, but their best price for price, like they, they got, like, so the well priced. Best value out there. Yeah. Best value, price for quality yeah. is yeah. unmatched. Oh, yeah, for sure, Joe. Yeah. Like they're bombers. Yeah. Some of their bombers are the cappuccino style. Nevada up with them too, because here in Nevada has some pretty good values. All right, this is the. This, but this, this, this is. Rod. We're not talking Rod J value. We're Rod, talking actual. Yeah, like, listen, listen Rod. Value here. Rod, I love you. <laughs> I appreciate you allowing us on your channel. It's a fantastic time. But I'm going to say this in the most non-PG PG way I possibly can. In this situation, fuck Sierra Nevada. Okay, because <laughs> Lagging Me is amazing in price value. You know well, you just went with the Ricky Bobby with all due respect, and I do say with all due respect. <laughs> no, I mean, well, Sierra Nevada has good 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 value, but like you'll see Laganitas come up with like their bombers of cappuccino style for $4.99. Yeah. Not Rajay value, just like regular value. It's like five dollars for a bomber of almost anything as I've heard of in this day and that, age. You know, that is so good, too. And the cappuccino sounds amazing for four nights. Hey, Joey. Oh, got him. Fired up over nothing. What's up? Was you able to pick that coffee up? Did you get a six pack or did you only get single? I just, I got a single bottle. Um, actually, I met up with a, a buddy today. The guy hung out with and we went to a place and had some drinks and uh, I gave him a couple of those other half beers that I picked up and he ha just so happened. He's like, Hey, have you had this yet? And I'm like, no, I totally haven't. He's like, all right, here's one. Okay. And give me a four pack yeah, of Super Sunshine. So I was like, yeah, yeah. Good times. I was only able to get singles also. I think it was like two fifty nine or something, a bottle maybe. Holy shit. I think it was, I think it was like five bucks here, but. You know. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. You get like a six pack for like 12 or 13 bucks here. What? The very. Very few people were actually selling them as a as a uh, six pack. So I'm saying, like news, man, they're freaking crazy with their value. It's like uh, it's unheard of in this day and age because with so many places wanting to raise the price because they know people want their beer or whatever the going rate is, Lagunitas never bumps their prices up. They they keep it true, and uh, you can't ask for anything more out of the craft brewery. I think in this point, can't. And it's a fantastic beer. It's not like they're uh, you know. <laughs> You're getting screwed on any ingredients or anything. I mean, it's a great, you know, one of the top top breweries out there, I believe. Yeah. And and, and, I, and I like to like uh, when people bring up Rogue. Here's the thing about Rogue for me personally. I don't think Rogue makes bad beer. Okay. I think some of their stuff is bad or hit and miss. Some of the stuff's good. But so many times when you walk into a local bottle shop because Rogue is in Oregon and like is in California, they'll be on like the West Coast shelf or very close by to one another. If you go look at a rogue bomber, you're like, well, this is 12 bucks for this double chocolate stout. And then you look over the cappuccino stout and you're like, it's four ninety nine. What are you gonna pick? <laughs> right. Yeah. And exactly. then you realize that that cappuccino stout is just as good as that double chocolate stout or better. And so many people get into craft beer when they ask about like, you know, what should I try or whatever? Lagunese is one of the first breweries I'll tell them to try just because of it's cost effective. For someone who's moving from macro and expected to pay a certain amount for a beer, when you're eating the craft beer, the shock to the system, I think, for a lot of people isn't so much the styles or the beer itself. It's the prices. They're like, oh, I, you know, I buy my, you know, whatever, my 12-pack of Bud Light for $8, and then they have to pay $8 for a six-pack? Taking aback a little bit because you're like, that's half, that's half the amount of beers for the same price. So when you show them cost-effective breweries that do a good job and are well-priced, you get more people into it, but Lagunitas is one of the few that is very cost effective, but also at the same time, their shit's just great. Their beer is great. It's not just good. Their beer is great on the whole. So that's an excellent I, point. Never even really thought of that aspect of it, but you're right. If you're trying to get somebody into it for the price uh -huh. point, I mean, you can't be, that's, 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 that would be a, you know, the perfect brewery to put somebody on as just now trying out some of the new stuff, you know, some of the craft into the craft world. If you don't want to scare it, you can't yeah. give it a craft title now, though. What's that, Rod? Yeah, we're giving a craft title. 
Well, yeah. Well, settle down. That's All right, right. settle down. Settle down, Heineken. <laughs> settle down. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but it's like Sam Adams, right? It's like Brad, right, you had to go there, didn't you? Still keep the craft title. Now. <laughs> well, yeah, no, but but but. I know what you're saying. I'm just messing. Well, with they're you. fucking <laughs> trolling. <laughs> God damn it, Rod. No, 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 it's, it's, it's a good point. It is a good point. And and like, at what at what point are we going to say that for the vast majority of breweries? Seems like a lot. Like we're doing that Avery. Uh, last week and like the week before they got bought out. Yeah. It's like just ran them out of nowhere. It's like, oh, they own 30% of this place. I'm like, oh, that's great. But whatever. Um, but no, but to get people, instead of saying uh, non macro, getting into people to beer that has different tastes than a macro brew, I don't know. Like, there's no good way to put it. It's, 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 right. even though it's craft, it's not, I get it. But like Lagunitas, Sierra Nevada, well, Sam like Adams. It is, yeah. Like, 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 like we talk about Bourbon County, what's in the bottle is craft. What the what the brewery is technically isn't craft, and that's kind of the same way you can take anyway. But if you want to get people into craft beer, forget about the branding, forget about who owns them. Lagunitas is one of the best entry level beer, just from a price standpoint. Like some of their stuff is really, it'd be tough for someone from the macro side to get into a lot of Lagunitas stuff. It, I mean, they they make some really robust, flavorful beers that might overwhelm a lot of macro drinkers. But for the price, I think a lot of macro drinkers won't care as much because they're like, holy shit, I only pay two dollars a bottle for that. Who cares? I'll try something else. But it'll be kind of interesting talking about kind of the craft because you look at the Great Lakes bottles. I don't think any, I know none that I've seen here has have adopted the independent label. And I've seen it pop up on other beer labels now. And I know some of the breweries don't want to put them on there. So it's kind of interesting if they're going to add that or not. Because they, you know, they got a good looking label as it is, but will they yeah. put that independent label on there or not be Kind yeah, Listerman, uh, Listerman has it on theirs now. Yeah, they put it on theirs. I think I think Mantry might be adding to theirs at some point. Um, I think going into 2018, you'll see a lot of breweries adding that. Yeah, for for if nothing else, pride. But they something like that, I expect them to probably do it if they're going to do it already. But you know, it could be something they're going to plan to do it this year. You just don't know. But they started to see them pop up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. I think even Bell's may have started doing it on theirs, possibly. But yeah, but uh, segue into you and start talking about Great Lakes. Yeah, I'll, I'll read the last couple comments and then we'll go into Great Lakes. Um, on the tenth says um, Long Island iced tea with vodka, vodka, rum, tequila, triple sec, sour mix, topped with coke, lemon garnish. Yeah, see that's the new recipe. Yeah, we, we did it. We also had gin in it back in the nineties. He also also has a, a very very crazy comment about certain individuals that I agree with him, but I won't read it because. I mean, I respect your channel, so we won't go into that. Um, Drunken One says, a little something is dab yummy. I think we all agree. Yeah. Right here. Um, and then, like yeah, I mean, little, whether you get little something, little something, something, it's all good. It's all good. Little, little something, something is definitely like, yeah, multiple thumbs, all the thumbs. Uh, oh, as long as you're getting awesome. something. Bing, 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 in the words of Joe. Yeah. yeah. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah, he's, he goes crazy with that. Uh, and then Craig from Camp Bear Review says the standard has not dra- dropped either with Lagunitas since the takeover. And I agree. I mean, they yes. were bought out by Heineken a couple of years ago, 50, 50 50 split, and then they just went, I think, 100% in the last six months. And seriously, out of anything I bought, like their quality is still fantastic. You know what I think yeah. for some of the people where the standard drops at? In here, yeah, they're mine. Yep, you know, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 exactly. It's like. It's, and that's a great point, Rod, because it's like anything else when it comes to s- anything in life. But when it comes, if you want to talk specifically about beer and craft beer, your mind plays a role, whether it's your palate. Like a lot of people drink something like, oh, it was better three years ago. Was it? Your palate was completely different back then. The hype of a beer. Well, I had to kill three people and pay $75 for this bottle. Automatically, it's 10 out of 10. Mm, that's not how it works. Your mind plays a huge role in what you think about a beer, what the quality of is it. And it's just it's sad it's sad that that's a reality but it is the reality that's why more people say blind taste and that's, what, that's what people tell you you think you should like also you know because like you know bourbon county firms is a great beer but people tell you oh it should be a 10 out of a 10 you know it should be great yep it may not be for everybody so you know if, if you, you almost feel like you're getting chastised if you don't like the beer yeah, and, and I, I think what Rod said was per- I think I I will always be of the opinion that if you want 100% unbiased reviews or unbiased opinions, the only way to honestly drink a beer with no in- input or influence from anything else is is blind. Yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see someone that 
take a blind Bourbon County KBS and then throw it a Lagunitas Westified and see if they can really pick it apart the difference between them. Yeah, yeah. or even throw in like a local, just like a local yeah. random barrel aged beer and barrel stout and just see because uh, you'd be surprised at what your own personal palate thinks when you take all biases out of the equation. Right. You know, so, I mean, it's 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 hard to take that out, especially as a you know as as you guys are beer reviewers, aside from Todd and myself, because we don't have channels. But you know, you and you and Eric specifically, and some of the guys watching, like you know what you like, whether it's style or brand or brewery or whatever. And even though you can go into a review and say there's no bias, there's still a little bit, regardless whether it's style. There's still a little bit there saying, like like Rod, if you're going to review a Belgian beer, you know you like Belgian beers. Right. So there's a little part of you going, I'm most likely going to like this beer. To what level, I don't know. So it's one of those things where when you revi review something blind, you get a 100% accurate opinion of a beer without any influence. And it's impossible for beer reviewers to do that on a basis. Like I said, I've sent, I've sent Paul and uh, Matt from Massive Beer Reviews blind beer mails where I taped up the, the bottles and, and the cans and they just poured it out and drank it and went to it and stuff. And it was a lot of fun watching. But even that's not blind because you can see the beer as you pour it. Yeah. So you kind of still have an understanding. So it's it's tough to do and not realistic, but it is the only only way to do it. But anyway, Great Lakes. So you know, Joe slacking as usual. No no research done because honestly, when I do research, it's just not worth it. Wikipedia is here. The website's here. We'll just read word for word, not really a paraphrase. But uh, Great Lakes. We all have Great Lakes tonight. Rod Rock and the Commodore Perry, the Elliot Ness. Uh, Eric Rockin, the Christmas Ale, Todd, Christmas Ale, along with the Blackout Stout. And I have the Edmund Fitzgerald and the Ohio City Oatmeal Stout. Uh, long story short, but not with me, usually long story, even longer. Great Lakes Brewery, they were formed in 2000, or, sorry, 2000, holy shit, I'm already buzzed. 1986 by two brothers that go by the name of Patton Dan Conway, and they actually... Like I said, they, they, they formed it in 86, but it didn't come to fruition until 1998. Uh, they got their uh, master brewer, or brewmaster, Thane Thomas, and engineer Charlie Price, which were former employees of Cleveland's last operating brewery. Now, remember, we're in 1988 when this happens, or 1986 in that realm. So Cleveland's last operating brewery is probably long ago. But they brought both of these guys back. That They were the employees of, a, of Schmidt's, the last brewery there. And uh, together they decided to design a seven-barrel brewing system, which they still use to this day. They use it for though their public exclusive beers, so most of you guys probably haven't tried any of their beers that they've released over the last five or ten years. Um, what they wanted to do with their brewery is they wanted to develop beers that reflected the style that both of the Pat and Con, uh, Pat and Dan Conway, what they enjoyed during their European travels. So they were looking for basically European influenced beers, which is why when you see Great Lakes Brewing Company, you see a lot of English influence, like the Commodore Perry that, uh, for instance, uh, Rob's drinking is a English IPA. Uh, you see the Vienna Lager, uh, Elliot Ness. You see a lot of influence in that. Um, the Elliot Ness Amber Lager, actually, and I didn't know this, so it's cool to, to read this and understand what's going on. It says they it honors the notorious prohibition officer who frequented the tavern that's now home to the Great Lakes Brewing Company Brew Pub. And it says a parentheses. How's that for irony? It's, it's pretty good. And they and and that um that prohibition officer actually employed the mother of Pat and Dan as a stenographer back in the day. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then the Heisman, which is now known as the Dortmunder Gold Logger, is obviously named for the football legend John Heisman who once lived in the Ohio City neighborhood, and obviously everyone knows what the Heisman Award is, right? College football, especially Rod and Eric. You guys, you know, yeah, you guys know what's up. Um, from the start, they focused on sustainability. Uh, they, they renovated a bunch, uh, they re renovated the 19th century building to house the brew pub. Uh, they purchased a bunch of used restaurant equipment to uh, stock their space. As they expanded and uh, new businesses sprouted and whatnot, Ohio City, gradually evolves into a bustling place to work, play, and brew. In the first year, they brewed uh, less than 1,000 barrels of keg beer, which is not a lot. And they hand-bottled, but it didn't even begin until a year after that. So they, they, didn't, they didn't begin bottling until a year after they produced the kegs. 
And the first time they actually bottled, they capped them by hand, which um, oh, that's created. Bottle, yeah. Yeah. And they said the first bottles they capped by hand after being knocked on with a screwdriver to create foam and push out oxygen. It says, thankfully, we've come a long way since those days. So I can only imagine, like, the, you know, the technology that's went in over the last 20 years where they were doing that by hand. That's just mind-boggling in, in, you know, in some respects, anyway. Um, again, it, it's funny we none of us have it, but the Dortmunder Gold Lager. Have you guys all had it, Dortmunder Gold? I've, I've had, had it before. That's actually not one of my favorite ones from them, but I'm not a huge lager guy. Yeah, it's not seen, but I haven't seen it. But I do have the sign, Dortmunder Gold, right back here. Oh, baby, that's a great segue into the Dortmunder Gold. So, so for for Great Lakes, the Dortmunder Gold is just like really, it's a, it's a, it's a solid, solid one. I mean, it, I think it's good, like, uh, you know, someone who drinks macro get like, crossover beer to get them into, for the most part, craft beer. Oh, yeah, but, uh, crossover, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like one of those ones. If you're at a beer and you're like, or if you're at a brewery or a bar and you're like, oh, which, what, what would I like? Because I'm a macro drinker. You go, here's the Dortmund or Golden. They won't hate it. And I give them a good understanding. But uh, that beer actually was like the beer that kind of made Great Lakes. And I, I mean, it's, I want to say made them. They say on the website, it set the stage for success because it won. Uh, a gold medal at the great American beer festival in the nineties. They don't specify which, which, uh, year, but like early nineties. And then two le years later, the Christmas ale, which both Todd and Eric are drinking, uh, debuted as one of the first American spiced holiday ales and quickly becomes the stuff of local legend. I'm glad they said local. Cause I don't think it's very legendary, but it's a great beer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock the Christmas sale. In uh, 92, they expanded into the Fries and Schul building, which later became home to their beer symposium. Uh, they actually outgrew that space, and they move into their main operation in their current production brewery on uh, Carroll Avenue. The brewery's 19th century buildings once acted as stables and storage facilities for the Leonard Schlafler Brewing Company. So back in the day, probably pre-prohibition, I would imagine. Um, after they realized they had good beer, they set out to find new customers. Um, they started hand delivering bottled beer to their first retailers, which was the West Point Market in Akron, Ohio. So shout out to Lance, the Lush, a.k.a. Lance Bell. He's an Akron, isn't he? Yeah, he's an Akron. Mm -hmm. um, insisting on selling their beer refrigerated to maintain freshness, Pat and Dan outfit the market with a used cooler so they're committed to quality right from the start. So they, they kept their beer cold at all times. Solid. Uh, in 2000s, they committed to more uh, more of a deep environmental uh, cause. In 2001, the first Burning River Fest takes place in the brewery's tank farm. And then in 2007, they put down roots at the Hall Farm and Village, founding the Pint Size Farm. Two years later, they joined a collective to form Ohio City Farm, thought to be the largest urban farm country. So sustainability. You know, local ingredients, all that good stuff. Um, all the while, the brewery experienced this tremendous growth, which I don't know how much growth they're getting nowadays, but back in the early to mid-2000s, Great Lakes was growing quite a bit, uh, no yeah. doubt. And uh, they uh, were first boosted by Northeastern, or sorry, North, Northeast Ohioans. Messed that up. Uh, then a growing distribution footprint filled with thirsty craft beer drinkers. They pass again, remember they were under 1,000 a, a barrels the first year. In 2010, they passed the 100,000 barrel mark after they added new th uh, three new 300 barrel fermenters. And then in 2013, uh, I have the glass here, they did celebrate 25 years uh, in, in business. And uh, they actually had another brew house uh, expansion, new markets, and they refreshed the brand a bit. So um, yeah, that's pretty much from their website. You know, of course, they're going to pat themselves on the back quite a bit because that's what you do on your website, right? Um, the Wikipedia site doesn't really tell a whole lot about the – I mean, it's like a couple paragraphs. Um, pretty similar. But, yeah, I mean, you kind of get the gist of Great Lakes. So go to their beer, their year current year-round beer anyway. Um, they have quite a few year-round beers, starting with the aforementioned Dortmunder Gold Lager. 
Uh, that's kind of like their flagship beer available everywhere. I mean, I've had it before. It's apparently, uh, Rod has and no one else has because after that beer, right? Who wants to drink a stupid lager? Um, <laughs> oh, Eric, has Eric had it before? I don't think, I, oh, I you have not, but I'm going to try it now. Yeah, Eric will like it, I think. It's just not, see, you know. It's, see, Eric, now I'd be curious. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what Eric thinks because he is the, the I guess, the, uh, the guy here who is into macro. So I would like to see what you think of it as a crossover, something, a stepping stone into craft. So Okay. All right. Dortmund I'll, I'll pick some up the next time I'm out. We'll be looking forward to it, Eric. Do All that right. soon, Eric. Do it soon. All right. I will. And then number two is their Elliot Ness Amber Lager again. Amber Vienna Lager in the vein of like a Boston Lager. Um, I think we've all had it. Have we all had it? Maybe Eric hasn't? Yeah. I don't know if Eric, if Eric has had that one either. What, what, what one was that? Elliot Ness. The Elliot Ness. Yes, I have had the Elliot Ness. It's good beer. Very good. Yeah, it's damn, damn tasty. Um, then the turntable pills, which apparently pissed off Rod because uh, it was not fresh. Well, it wasn't fresh, but that's actually <laughs> one of my favorite pills out there. I've never had it. Um, I feel like that's a newer one, though, in the last year or two that they've they've yeah. come to the forefront. Right? Yeah, that's one of their newer ones, I believe. Hmm. Um, I wonder, I, I could go look, but do they, what do they consider that? A Czech style Pilsner or a um, German style? Do you know? I think it's a, I think it's a German Pilsner. I don't think it's a, it might be a Czech. Let me see. I'm going to look on on tap, even though it's probably about 80% accurate. They say oh. Czech, Czech style Pilsner. Now there's a huge, I mean, there's a difference, but it's not, whatever. It doesn't it's matter. got a nice crisp balance to it though. It's really nice. It goes down like in the summer. It's really great for like a lawnmower type beer. So, so again, another stepping stone for someone in macro coming in, drink the Pilsner, probably not be offended by it too much. Yeah. I think actually anybody like would drink macro will probably enjoy that one. Well, that's what Pilsners are, just a slightly more hoppy, more flavorful blogger. That's all Pilsner yeah. is, really. Um, Holy Moses White Owl. I've had I've had that one. Yeah, it's it's just a Belgian style uh, wit beer, more or less coriander, orange peel, the whole nine. Very good. Um, they also have their Burning River Pal Owl. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's another – Again, these are, and that's the thing. I think more so than any brewery we've done to this point, Great Lakes has, for lack of a better word, classic styles, classic beers. That if you've been drinking craft beer for 10, 15, 20 beers, you've probably had these. I don't, pretty much the easiest way to explain it, but it's just, a, it's a nice palette. Um, also, a part of the year round is their Commodore Perry. And, uh, what they say as a spiel on the site is, what's this question mark? I don't know. What is this? It says, it's a British-style IPA named after the man who defeated His Majesty's Royal Navy in the War of 1812. Consider this a bold, hoppy, and mildly ironic plunder of war. So, again, it's an English-style IPA. And for those of you out like you got nowadays the Haze Bros, the people who drink nothing but New England-style IPAs because they look like they're drinking grapefruit juice or you know, pineapple juice or whatever. If you are not well versed in the English IPA style, Commodore Perry is a perfect beer to have an understanding of where they're coming from from the English IPA. Of course, Craig from Camp Beer Reviews can correct me because he's actually English, but he won't because he knows I'm right. <laughs> I love you, Craig. <laughs> uh, unless he doesn't have to fear the beer now, though. No, he doesn't have to. There's no fearing of the beer now. It's just corruption running wild like Hulkamania in the '80s. Um, the Emma Fitzgerald Porter, which I have, is again a uh, classic Porter. Um, if you haven't, you owe it, you owe it to yourself to try it. It's just a classic. I'll fucking standing. Yeah, it's so it's again. Don't go into that beer thinking you're gonna get uh, like all oh, crazy chocolate and this and that. It's just a well-made porter. And back before there was crazy barrel-aged beers and all these kind of adjunct beers, this this is was it. It's fantastic. So, um, what I what I like to do is I kind of compare this to the Founders Porter, Bell's Porter. Yeah. Um, Black Butte from Deschutes, London uh, uh, London Porter from Fowler's yep. in the UK. Mm. Put all those in together and just see what happens because uh, you'd be surprised at how good these beers are. But that's that's pretty much it for the year-round beers. Um, the seasonal beers, they seem to have a uh, quite a few, probably more so than almost any other brewery. I, I click on their seasonal beers, and it, you know how many show up? Twelve. Because apparently a season for them is every month. 
Actually, it's 13, so more than every month. that calendar in their beers for 2018. It's yeah. pretty much every month something's happening. So um, they also have another year-round beer, so hang on. There's there's actually might be a couple more year-round beers that they F me on. No, the Light Keeper Blondale. I've never seen that. It's in a can. That one. Uh, is it good? It's good. It's um, part of the variety pack, usually. Yeah, it's, it's in Canada. 6.6 is pretty high for Blondale, I think. But, okay, so the first uh, seasonal beer is they have Conway's Irish Ale, which I've had before. I do like just, that one. Yeah, just an Irish red availability in January. Good beer, um, especially if you like Irish reds. In February, they have Hot Madness Double IPA. have not had that one. I have not had that one either. I, nope. The same here. I guess uh, we all should probably try it at some point. Now for February. It is a 9% 100 IBU double IPA. It sounds like a big beer. That's, that's a beer I kind of like there. Yeah. And it pairs with uh, maybe some of your spicy food and my mild blue cheeses. <laughs> and and little, a little bit of garganzo. Not that Limburger. Don't no Limburger, Limburger baby. Limburger, Limburger and, and, and it also says it pairs with Midnight Movies. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It totally, it totally says midnight movies. Uh, they have a little thing like they have the cloud uh, cloud cutter ale, which I've never had. Uh, maybe it's a new introductory. It's in March. It says pairs pairs well with grilled shrimp, goat cheese, and your inner daredevil. See what you're doing there, Great Lakes. I want you to stop. Uh, but cloud cutter ale is just. It looks like a. It says a burst of juicy citrus zip across a friendly, lightly filtered wheat. So it's like a it's like a citrus wheat beer. So I've never seen cloud cutter. Any of you guys? I have not. I have not either. And then one of my favorite Great Lakes beers is in April, and that is Chill Wave Double IPA. Yes, sir. The Chill Wave is actually really good. Yeah. And that it, is a good one. And That's if you're good. rod and get it for negative $7 a six-pack, then – sorry, four-pack. <laughs> four-pack. Four four pack. Great Lakes sorry, four will pay nice. to try it. makes money on that one. <laughs> no money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you to take it off the shelf. Rod, Rod shows up and they hand him like a five dollar bill and some change, and he walks away with a four pack. Of I mean, it only happens a couple times a year, maybe. If that. See, he agrees. He knows he's not. He's well, not liar. He walks away with a four pack and a twenty dollar bill. I think it was like five ninety nine or something for the four pack. I know I sent a picture of Joe when I did it last time. Yeah, yeah, I deleted that picture. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so Great Lakes also in April comes out with a beer called Rally Drum Red Ale. Uh, I had that for the first time this year. That was good, I thought. Was it better than Conway's uh, Irish Red? No, it wasn't better than that, but it was pretty good. It's like this for the Cincinnati Reds. Kind of yeah. Like they, well, well, they say, is it the Reds or is it? No, the, it's it, Cleveland. It, it's Cleveland. They say with a tip of a, a tip of the cap to Cleveland baseball super fan and bleacher seat percussionist, John J. Adams, our Red L, feels a uh, double header of bitter hop. And roasted malt flavor. Well, they do it down here in Cincinnati for like the Reds games when they're having them. Yeah, it's like it's a baseball beer. Yeah. Go with that. Um, one that I haven't had, but this is a this is a take on uh, a, a variant of their uh, Holy Moses. Uh, in May, Holy Moses Raspberry White Ale. Have not had that. Ooh, one. That might be really good. Yeah, especially for the summer. Yeah, yeah, starting in the spring summer, that might be good. So basically, they're Holy Moses with raspberries. So. Um, another one that Rod gets a deal on. I know everyone's surprised. Uh, in June, their Lake Erie Monster. That's awesome, too. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Pa pairs well with steak, aged cheeses, daddy, and tall tails. <laughs> pairs well with my belly. You know, I, it doesn't do well with steak. Get in my belly. <laughs> and, uh, and August, because this is the appropriate month for this, but uh, Oktoberfest is released in August because that's when you release Oktoberfest, apparently. <laughs> before, the, before the party. In August? They release it in August? That's, yeah, beer valve. Really that's kind of late, though. Yeah. It's kind of late now, dude. Well, uh, compared to, like, Sam Adams, right? Sam Adams releases it in, like, February. That's what well, I uh... Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Um, I will say this though. I, I thought I thought for a long time the Great Lakes uh, Oktoberfest was like one of the best American Oktoberfests. But Paul from PA Brews and myself a couple years ago we did like a battle of American Oktoberfest to German Oktoberfest and didn't do well. So that whole blind, yeah, right? The German one. I mean, German. I like Victory like Brewing's Oktoberfest. Yeah, yeah, that was another one. Beer. Yeah, I don't want. I want to say it, but but Paul again. Paul has a stupid palate. Mine's even worse than his. But we did. We we did it, and the American winner was Sam Adams. Believe it. Or not. Really? 
Yeah, it was, that, that wow. was the most flavorful and best of the bunch from the American side. So wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, Eric Oktoberfest isn't bad. I've had that a few times this year. It's well made. Yeah. yeah. I was say, that didn't surprise me at all, really. No. Uh, we have uh, Nosferatu, which uh, I think Eric was talking about earlier. The Imperial oh, That's Red. another excellent beer. In September, yep. It's a 8% 70 IBU Imperial Red. I can Red still Red. get that, by the way. You better get on it, Daddy. Uh, the thing about the thing about the Great Lakes is though that's like the third Red Ale in their seasonals. They have Conways, yeah. they have the Rally Drum, and now they have an Imperial one, which you don't see a lot of Red Ales. The Imperial one is uh, I I'm a big fan of Red Ales, but their Imperial is just uh, out of this out of this world good. Yeah, and it has an awesome label. So like, how can yeah. you beat that, right? Yeah. And then um, October is the Ohio City uh, Oatmeal Stout. Which uh, I think they, uh, so they it won a World Beer Championship in uh, 1996 and a Great American Beer Festival bronze in 1999, but I want to say they brew uh, they uh, bottled it for the first time like last year, because I I didn't see this up until I want to say 2016. So. And that's almost like a throwback stout though, because it's yeah. not it's a little more thin than usual on the stout, but yeah, it's five point four five point four percent so. Like as I'm drinking it, definitely, yeah, it's like on the lower side of medium body. Yeah, but you get some, of the, you get some of the roastiness in it. Oh, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's definitely quite roasty, and despite the fact that it's thin, the oats add a, like a nice creaminess to it, so it kind of makes up for the lack of body. Now they put it on a nitro. You really like it too. Oh well, that would be Chris from on the tenth. He would freaking go nuts <laughs> and spaz out. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think it'd be good on certainly on um, nitro. And but but as is. It, it's, it, it, I guess, a everyday drinking, dare I say, quaffable beer where you could just drink a six pack and not really worry too much. So, um, good beer. Uh, Christmas Ale is their November release because everyone knows Christmas is in November. And uh, it is brewed with honey, cinnamon, and ginger. So, again, when we're talking, I was talking about like. <laughs> <laughs> See, she's doing that rod. I like it. Uh, like when I was talking about gingerbread, and then I think uh, Todd was the one who brought, brought an apple, and I mentioned apple cinnamon. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't even know it was brewed with cinnamon and ginger. Like I didn't remember, but it's it's just a really well made spice beer. Like it's it's a well winter made. warmer, so it's just it's really nice. It's it doesn't overwhelm the palate. One thing about a lot of Christmas sales, a lot of spice beers, is like the predominant note is usually the spice. And I think in that beer, you're not getting overwhelmed with it. It has a nice balance, as uh, Eric said. So, yeah. It apparently pairs well with roast duck, spice desserts, and ugly Christmas sweaters. So, that's what it says. <laughs> I haven't had roast duck all the time. Uh, hopefully, no one ever wears an ugly Christmas sweater on the show. Um, <laughs> Blackout Stout is released in November. And we only, we only had Eric, or sorry, uh, Todd drinking it tonight, but 9.9%, 50 IBUs. Now, how for 9.9% beer, does it even taste like it, Todd? Like, no, not at all. No, you didn't. No, it was it was very mild. I thought, especially for being 9% beer, it was well hidden. So you get a four pack of those, you black out. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was. I mean, for, fuck's for the content, sake. it was it was mild. Uh, you know, almost like I said, it was almost uh, towards a porter type. Uh, for lack of better terminology, watery almost for even for an imperial style. But it's really good, though. It yeah. is good. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, I, I've had. Yeah, I've I had it a couple of years ago. I, they do a barrel aged version that they sell at the breweries and uh, at the brewery itself. And the only one I always wanted to try that, but never had the chance to. So that'd be still one that I want to grab at some point. Um, that does it for the beers. That does it really for Great Lakes. Um, so we'll go into personal, I guess experiences whatever so we'll start with todd first beer you ever had from them and uh we'll do it a little differently what is your favorite beer from them least favorite and what do you want to try um, yeah, it's, it's like seven different questions so i apologize <laughs> i haven't had a lot of experience with great lakes like i said we don't really get them here anymore and when we did i you know wasn't really drinking a lot of craft beers at the time or if i did i wasn't picking them up so according to my own cat i've only had like seven counting two of them tonight so five prior to the night um, a chill wave although i didn't rate very well three and a half back in 2014 i had it, I had it Todd, Todd, we're gonna have to get, get out 
<laughs> no, but, I, but I've, I've, I've had it recently, you know, since then, and I really enjoy it. I like that one. I would, I would, I would definitely rate that one a lot higher. Um, actually, it's probably one of my favorite uh, beers that I've had from Great Lakes. That one in the Erie Monster. Um, and, and the and the you know and the Edmund Fitzgerald is good, and the Commodore Perry is good. Like I said, I haven't had a lot of experience from them, but what I have had has been been pretty solid. So positive experience with them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. What I would like to have, I don't know. There's a lot of them out there that I haven't. Had. You mentioned quite a few of them that sounded very interesting that I'd like to try. Well, even the barrel aged blackout stout. After having the blackout stout like that, be be curious to see how it holds up in the barrels. Being like you said, a little bit thin and not as intense. Like, yeah, I'd be curious to see how it holds up the barrels too. So, mm -hmm. so positive experience overall, but you haven't had a lot of experience with it. So that's what I. That's yeah, what I'd like to try more, and I and I'll look for more of them. Uh, like I said, I don't get them in. I don't get them in my state, but it's not that far. I travel to Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, pick them up. So. One thing I noticed oh, is that all the four of us live like really close to the border of another state or country. You got Rod, who is on the Ohio Kentucky border. You, and in Indiana. The, Only about Indiana. Yeah, Indiana. And then you're what? You're Indiana and Kentucky. I think, I think, um, what's close to you, Eric? Is it uh, Indiana as well? Yeah, Indiana, Michigan, and uh, Ohio. Ohio, and I have Canada, Ontario. <laughs> oh, I have Canada too. <laughs> yeah, no, I have like Canada. fifteen minutes away. Yeah, it's really crazy. We all live close to another border of a another state or country. That's awesome, but really weird that all four of us do. So, I'm happy though. Anyway, uh, Rod, so your first experience, your favorite beer, least favorite beer. What do you want to try from them? Um, I think my first experience with them was actually the Fitzgerald. Which yeah. is pretty solid. Favorite beers though, neck and neck is Chill Wave and it's Lake Erie Monster. Um, flip a coin on that one. Both of them are my two best. Least favorite is the Grandis Grandis Lagos. I didn't like that one really. I thought it was okay, but it was kind of weird. It's kind of like a pink lemonade type lager type thing. It's yeah, they started coming out with that last year, so that one what didn't really impress me. And then the one I want to try that. For some reason I haven't picked it up yet. Was the Alberta Clipper? I don't know if they make that anymore. Do they still have they, that on the shelves? I think they still make it. I think they do still make it. Hmm. All right. Well, that's hot. and so uh, I've but, had the Alberta Cl uh, uh, Alberta Clipper Porter. Wasn't a fan, but I mean, we all have different pals. So if you well, see I mean, it, I, pick it up. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you got you got to give it a go. Screw what Joe says with no beard. He's <laughs> All right, Eric. Eric, experience with Great Lakes, favorite, least favorite. What do you want to try? Um, my first experience was the Edmund Fitzgerald, which is outstanding. Mm -hmm. My favorite has to be the Imperial Red Ale that they make. That, no, no that, that is just so good. I, if they made that year round, that'd be my one of my go tos. Awesome. And, and that's and that's coming from an American adjunct lager drinker like Bud Miller Coors stuff. He likes Miller Lite. It's his favorite beer, but he likes Nosferatu. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> um, one of the beers I would like to try. I'm. I am actually. You guys say that the that the gold beer that they make. Yeah, don't dorm under gold. Pick it up, man. Yeah, I, that's the one I kind of want to try. I mean, there's a good amount of people that like it. It's just for me, it's not something I would use prefer. As a lager, yeah. it's a good lager. It's just it's a step up for a macro and, and drinker. Yeah. It's what it is. And they're pilsner. Yeah, I, I think those two beers honestly. I think you me. like the turntable, yeah. But but that's kind of right in my wheelhouse. That's why I, but that's Ex why I say that. Exactly. Like like I said, it's it's a good uh, you know crossover beer where a macro drinker could per pick up the Dortmunder Gold and 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 not be offended by it. Right. But someone who's a well established even even though you you know you like macro beers, you still, you know, have drank a shit ton of uh micro brews and craft beers. So I think you'll still appreciate that beer, but you might not think it's so much better than a macro beer you probably ever go back right. to because of the price point. You know, because yeah. it gives it's still exactly. craft beer prices. Exactly. Hey, um, wrong goal for gold. No, baby, it won it won gold at the uh, Great American Beer Fest, baby. It won gold, no, baby. But let me tell you something, baby. That beer does not pair with well, some of your more pungent cheeses, baby. Maybe some mild cheddar. Maybe some mild cheddar. Your your just American. <laughs> um, for me, uh, Edmund Fitzgerald Porter, world class Porter for me. Just oh yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, it's 
and 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 honestly, Christmas ale for me. Christmas ale. You guys are both drinking it tonight. Like, if I step back and just say, what is my, some of my favorite Christmas beers? Great Lakes is up in the conversation. The beer is so well balanced and not over the top spicy that I could drink a couple bottles of it and just be happy. And at the ABV, again, seven and a half percent all day, every day. Um, least favorite? I don't really have a least favorite from them. If I had to pick, you know, maybe the Alberta Clipper Porter. I thought it was thin and not great with the raspberry, but again, it, even that I gave like a three, two, five out of five hundred taps. So I didn't. Oh, wait, I'm a brain now. <laughs> there you go. Joe, What's there up? hasn't been a beer for me that I haven't liked from them. Yeah, I, I think I think there's least favorites of the bunch from them, but nothing I dislike. Is, is pretty much where I put Great Lakes. Like the lowest rating I think I gave on a tap is a three out of five, which is still like an above average beer. Yeah. But something that like I'm not probably gonna buy again, but nothing that I hate or dislike. Well, their mixers um, are a lot better than some of the other ones. Oh yeah. yeah, I think great. I think Great Lakes honestly is one of those companies, and again, I don't want to discredit them because I think they're a great brewery, but they don't have many beers that wow you. But so many in their catalog are just well made to the style, and if you like that style, it's usually an awesome beer. So again, like the Edmund Fitzgerald, American porters are a style that a lot of people, especially nowadays with the 7 billion styles and adjunct this and dry hop that and everything going on. A lot of people just don't go, you know, I really just want American Porter. I'm going to drink all the American, like no one does that. But if you drink the American Porter and you like porters, you're going to love the Edmund Fitzgerald. It's just right in the wheelhouse of people who like that style. I think that's kind of the range of great lakes. They brew everything well within the style but so many of their styles are like old ancient styles or I shouldn't say ancient, but just old school styles that a lot of places don't do nowadays. So that's where they kind of win, right? They English IPAs and Vienna lagers and American porters and, you know, red ales and things that nobody really gets hyped about anymore. But when you drink them, you're like, I should drink this more often or damn, this is so good. So that's kind of where it is for me for the beer. I want to drink from them. Yeah. Barrel aged blackout stout. And that's, I want to try it at some point. I would do, I do, so, I do. I, hopefully somebody has someone maybe i have a channel i can bag for the beer from somebody <laughs> maybe my <laughs> stature of like 60 subs somebody be like yeah i totally can get that but like, yeah no probably not um but hopefully at some point we we can all try that beer because i think it'd be good um last but not least to wrap up the segment and the show for the most part unless rod has like 700 more things to do um We'll go to, I guess, overall opinions of the beer, uh, of the brewery, and then final rating out of five. We've never really done this before, but Rod started giving ratings out of five. And I'm like, this is his show. He does what he wants. So we're going to introduce out of five ratings, for so untapped ratings for the brewery. What's your overall opinion of them out of five? So we'll start with Eric. Oh, goodness. Um, based on, on the five. beers that I've had, based on the beers that I've had, I, I mean, I – I, I got to give him a five. A hundred. Oh, man. Wow. He's not wow. acting around, ladies and no, gentlemen. I, I mean, every, every beer that I've had from them has been outstanding, good. I, I really haven't had any qualms with them. But but I haven't had all their beers. Don't get me wrong. So I've only had about maybe six or seven of them. So there's an asterisk. But, there's an asterisk. There. Yeah. Yeah. With an asterisk. Yeah. yeah. A TBD but, with parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> But, but I, I mean, I really haven't had a bad beer from these guys. I mean, I'm I'm trying to be as truthful truthful as I can. I'm, they're they're just really really good. I mean, I, I'm two thumbs up from these guys. Seriously, nice. Yeah, well, I mean, that's like the second. Five. I don't think we ever had a five out of five. So I don't know what to do. So we're just gonna segue into Rod and just like I mean, that's a five. Out of five. <laughs> Rod's Rod's so opinion on the on on the brewery overall and what you're writing. I mean, I think with them, you get a solid brewery overall for what they can produce. Um, I'm not a five one. I'm going to bring it down a little bit on mine. Um, for me, what I've had, I've had a good amount of their beers. They're more of a four to me. Um, like I said, some of their misses are better than what some brews are putting out, but they don't really wow you, like you said, Joe, on some of their beers, the more you get into them. But they take chances. They put stuff out there. I mean, if there's only two of them that I've given like a four seven five and untapped on, that's been the Chill Wave and the uh, Lake Erie. The Nafarastu is like a four five for me. Um, and then after that, a lot of them are between that three five to 
four area. Then I've got a few that are like at three, nothing really lower than a three. But, you know, it's a matter of what you find and what you really like. Like, you know, I could walk in there and I can see chill wave it on because I got everybody just pick it up, put it in a cart, and you're good to go and you're moving to the next thing. Um, but I don't do it with that with a lot of their beers. You know, the Fitzgerald, like I said, was one that I had, I think, when I first got theirs. And it's a decent porter. It's an old school type porter, but it's not a porter that moves me per se. Um, I, think it's, I think it's just a good porter that's traditional, but it's almost a, a that time presence thing again, right? So there's other porters I would rather have ahead of that one. Mm-hmm. Not really bad against them. It's just you've had your moment in the spotlight and the spotlight's kind of shrinking on you now. There's like a new capsule of brown ale. There's other stuff I would rather get involved in. But the porter is still good. Like if someone handed it to me, I'm not going to say this is all you got. You know, I'm going to drink yeah. it. Yeah. All right. Before we segue into Todd, uh, Rob, we're going to have to delete your channel real quick. Yeah, I think we're just going to, can you leave and then delete it real quick? We'll wait until the show is over. No, um, no, I, I, and I think what you say is totally fair. And, and, I, and I get that poor, uh, part of it. So uh, kudos to you for you know saying what you believe, Rob, because a lot of people don't. Um, but anyway, Todd, What's your yeah, I kind of agree. I kind of agree with uh, you guys a little bit. Um, they make some good stuff. Uh, like Rob said, they're not. Their misses are better than a lot of other other people's misses. Exactly, Todd. Uh, I haven't had a lot of experience with the Great Lakes. Uh, what I have had has been been pretty good, but nothing that just blows me away. I would probably put them in a three seven five to four kind of range. Um. And it's just probably the lack of, of, of sampling size that I've had. You know, I said I've mines at the I had seven you know, different types of their beer. So I can't say I can give them a fair assessment at this point because I haven't had enough of them. What I have had has been good, but nothing mind blowing. That's fair enough. I mean, um, yeah, my, my final statement on them is uh, if you go to Great Lakes, I don't think you're looking at anything – from them for the wow factor you're not looking for some imperial uh stout aged in barrels with 75 different you know adjuncts or fruits in them or whatever you're not looking for some amazing uh you know new england style ipa you're not looking for some crazy sour beer what you're looking from great lakes is for something that uh is classic is timeless and a style that's been around for hundreds of years and every single beer they do is for the most part, not every single, let me take that back. Most of the beers they do are very well made to style. One of the best within the style. The problem for a lot, I think, of new age craft beer drinkers are the styles they do are old school styles that were maybe hip and cool 15, 20 years ago. So I think you'll lose a lot of the, 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 the people that have gotten into craft beer over the last five years that aren't looking for these classic styles. For me, rating wise, I'd give them a solid four to five, and the reason I give them the, the slight quarter bump because I kind of agree with Rod and Todd in a lot of respects. Not to say that you know Eric's five out of five is off base because I, yeah, it all depends on who you are, and what you've had from them, what you like stylistically, and if you like a lot of these styles, you're gonna give them a high rating and you're gonna love their beers. Yeah, I like a lot of their beers, but there are some misses even though those misses are still solid, there's just misses, but I give them the extra half bump grade for me personally, because I, again, I think they just make styles that are old school, but to the style. And if you're looking for a specific style and they brew it, chances are it's going to be a damn good beer. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's just, if you haven't had great lakes and you have access to them, Try out everything in their year-round lineup before even getting into the seasonals. See what you like from them. You again, Rod has Elliott Ness and Commodore Perry on the screen. You know, I have Edmonds Fitzgerald and the Ohio City. You know, you have Christmas Ale. You have Blackout Stout. A couple of those are seasonals, but like the whole range that Great Lakes have, very diverse. A lot of different styles. And number two, and something we didn't touch on tonight, very well priced. You can get a lot of their six packs for under ten bucks. A lot of their four packs for under ten bucks. Some of their seasonals, and that goes. A little- wow, I've never seen Joe lock up like that before. Long way. <laughs> there you go. You locked up there, Joe. No, I, it froze on my screen. But anyway, um, 
the price point is something we don't really talk about a lot, and I feel like um, you know we've done a lot of breweries on this on this on this uh, show and on the Beer Flow show, and uh, I think Great Lakes is up there with some of the best when it comes to oh, yeah, for so, sure and availability too. Like their stuff isn't highly sought after, so you don't have to shank multiple peoples in the back of their knees to to you know get like a six pack of their beers. So it goes a long way to be able to get their beers at a good price, and I think I think that's a a fair uh, quality to that to that brewery in general. So anyway, I think what what we've all said tonight is that Great Lakes good brewery. Check them out. I, I know I know that seems to be the running theme for our whole segment. It was like at the end of it, we're like, ah, go check brewery. It's all great, but the breweries that we've done, there's reason we've done them on the show because they're. I mean, th this has probably got to be one of the highest ones we've done thus far. Yeah, I mean, we've all given them basically a four plus tonight. Yeah. Which I mean, between them and Avery, I think is probably the top in the top echelon of the beer, uh, breweries we've done so far. Yeah. There's still have other breweries that do, like Lagunitas, Founders, <laughs> and a lot of breweries. So. You're pushing that Lagunitas, I tell you. I'm telling you, Lag, I'm pumped up. So, but before we go into anything, should we tell people what we're doing with our, our, our awards show in a couple weeks? Go ahead, Joe. You're pumped on the well, awards show. You, you segue into it. Go for it. <laughs> so anyway, so we're ripping off the UK beer tubers because – they're in the UK. No one cares. No. Um, so shout out to Craig from Camp Beer Reviews, Harry from Blue Nose uh, Beer Reviews, uh, Rob Hopsine.com, Hopsine Beer Reviews. Um, who am I forgetting? Clueless Drinker, Peter, right, all those right. guys. They do a award show, It's I guess, every year. Uh, they did it this year on Harry's channel called the Golden Pines Awards. And they basically – they have like 30 categories, which is crazy. It's like a three-hour show. And basically, they just gave their awards for the year. Now, this is not a like group awards where like they come to general consensus and do it. It was basically here is the topic like best beer of the year. Go to each person, kind of like we do with this, our own personal opinion, and then just throw it out there. We want to interact with you guys, the viewers. So hopefully, Rod can get like the list of the awards we have, so you can you know follow along and tell us your favorite beers and blah blah blah. But um. That's what we're going to do on the 28th of December, I believe. I is, that so. we, is that what we're going for? I mean, yeah. if that doesn't work and it's crazy for anybody, we can move it to the following week in early January. But, I mean. Or you can replay it. Yeah, you could. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 28th of December is what we're going for. So two weeks from tonight. Um, I've put down, I think, it was, was it 15, 13, 15 categories, something like that. Something like that. Yeah, and uh, basically it's just like best beer of the year, best hot four beer, best barrel aged beer, best sour, uh, best local brewery, best local beer, uh, best beer tuber. All of us, we're going to go around the panel. Everyone's going to give their personal opinion. And, yeah, some of these beers you're not going to be able to get. Some of these beers maybe never heard of. But at the end of the day, it's our favorite beers of the year, favorite breweries of the year, favorite beer tubers of the year. It's kind of like an year-end award show that we're going to try and do. Hopefully – Hopefully it's very interactive and a lot of fun. But I mean, I figured I'd steal it from the UK guys because just steal more stuff from England, no big deal. And uh, you know, see what we got going on. But I mean, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I can't, I, I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, that's the plan. Mm -hmm. And we all had to do a little research, or we're going to have to do a little research. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of effort put in, just a little effort. Thanks to Joe. Everybody, thank you. Yeah, you're we'll welcome. <laughs> you guys actually have to do some uh, work for once. You know, I'm sitting here researching these breweries for a whole three <laughs> seconds every week, and you guys can't even do anything. See, Joe's trying to figure out what it takes to run a show so he knows when he does his channel. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you mean run it directly into the he graduated now. from the internship. <laughs> Rod gave me a I little exam. <laughs> I gave me a little bit too much power. Like I got like two percent power on the show, and that's just I mean, the beer is no longer here, so it's full corruption to the finest. <laughs> you got any more comments out there before we head to the? Yeah, we do have quite a few comments. Um, we're gonna start with uh, Redbeard, who says that was a very enjoyable vlog. He did Witchwood Black Witch, which he would. Uh, recommend quite a bit. So that's, that's my brewery. I haven't done a lot of. I always see Witchwood beers around one of my spots. Yeah, and if any of us here you know want to watch his vlog, watch that because apparently we're on muted in the background on this TV. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then he says, and if an after chat thingy happens, I'd be all down for that. Uh, I mean, it's pretty late. I, I, I doubt we'll probably just go offline and chat for a bit. But I mean, it's Rod's, it's Rod's channel, not mine. So, 
whatever. Yeah, we went a little bit longer tonight. It might be tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow we'll do an impromptu thing or something. But we're Friday night impromptu, Daddy. Depends. We got to check in with Lance. <laughs> Friday night. We're trying to get Lance to run Friday nights now. So. Yeah, we don't want to step on Lance's toes. Let's be I mean, he's the natty daddy king after all. Um, Bob, <laughs> Bob continues with, there is a totally unrelated Great Lakes Brewing in Ontario. Uh-oh. They yeah, say right. their beers are aren't frozen now. The US. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Now you're going. Now you're fine on mine. Yeah. You're all fine right. on mine. All right. That's, that's all right. So that anyway, neutrality. Is that beer not being there? Your computer's all screwed up. He Face says um, <laughs> the, the Great Lakes Brewing is available in the U.S., um, or, sorry, the, the Great Lakes Brewery in Ontario is not available in the U.S., but he has their winter ale checked in on untapped. I've had a lot of Great Lakes. So the difference between Great Lakes Brewing and Great Lakes Brewery is just that. It's Great Lakes Brewing Company in the States, Great Lakes Brewery in Canada. With a lot of the Canadian guys, you know, have drank that, I believe. I, I've had a, a crap ton of stuff from the Great Lakes Brewery, and they do amazing beer. In fact... They're doing a release this weekend for their Beard of Zeus. I get the irony here. I have yeah. the beard. Um, and it's a barrel-aged English barley wine aged in uh, bourbon barrels. And it's amazing. Yeah. I've had it before. You can do one with the Ohio Company, and it'd be like a collab and you know, I think, beer across borders or something. Yeah, you think they would at this point. I don't know. Um, Mr. Angus Wangus says The Untouchables was a pretty good Elliot Ness flick with Kevin Costner. Yeah. One of his last great films. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Yeah, Angus Wangus. For the morgue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, a great, it's a great movie. Uh, Mr. Angus Wangus, uh, I guess, gives props to Drunken One on his Kegerator. So Drunken One's very happy. Um, and then Chris on and then Chris on the 10th says, when people disagree with Joe, his beer grows a little. <laughs> <laughs> Better that than something else. <laughs> yeah, right, right in both arrows like that. It's fine. another channel, Rod. It's another yeah. channel. <laughs> for fuck's sakes. But yeah, so uh, that's all for comments. I, I guess we'll give a quick shout out to um, Craig from Kent Beer Reviews, Redbeard, Bum, Count Drunkula, Mr. Angus Wangus, Ewart, aka Tech and Murray Earth, and uh, did anyone show up? And Drunken One. Uh, as, one, yeah. And Chris on the tenth. Yeah. Holy Christ, there's a lot of people. Uh, thank, shout out to all those guys for showing up, no, throwing no. some comments out there, watching. Great times. Try to keep. I try to keep up on the comments this week a little bit more. I mean, you know, we we get into it like you know, Rod will you know, mention a beer news and we'll talk for like 15, 20 minutes about it, or we get into the things and it's tough. But I, I try to keep an eye on it a little bit better than I did in the past. So that's on me. We're good. Always good appreciative now. and. Uh... Of course, we always care about the folks. So, mm -hmm. hey, without them, what is what is the point of doing the show? I mean, if you don't, if you're just doing a live show with no interaction with the viewers, then it's kind of pointless. You're just talking to ourselves. Yeah. So, so, as you're going out around this holiday season, I believe Mr. Eric wants to spread a few words to let you know and how to handle that. Exactly, guys. If you had too much drink, please get a designated driver. Guys, if you're going to be try to be here and drive home drunk, you're going to get pulled over by the cops, you're going to do the stupid sobriety test, then you get thrown in the back of a cop car, then thrown in jail, and then possible prison time. Guys, if you hit or kill somebody, you're going to be in the slammer for quite a while. And if you kill yourself, all you've done is put yourself six feet under, all right? Sleep off your buzz, get an Uber, taxi, Lyft, just call somebody to come get you, or ask the bartender to call somebody to come get you. Just in this day and age, it's stupid to do, to do drunk driving because there's zero talent, all right? Just... Have a buddy come get you. Exactly. And with that being said, anybody else got any closing comments? Nope. They're about solid. So everyone better enjoy the year end beer awards. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Otherwise, you know, you know, we'll be a little depressed and I should I'm be nervous now. I gotta study all weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you gotta look at that untapped and really go to work and research. <laughs> so, you know, and then um, of course we can't close out without uh, our so-called, I guess, mascot of the show. So we got to give a little love mm -hmm. out to the polka dot one. And usually, I have one of our local guys here at the radio station of some of the stuff he's done. And of course, I'm talking about the blonde bomber, the dusty rose. But <laughs> I found an interesting little clip here, and it's actually going to come in the form of uh, did I just lose it, Paul Heyman. So if you guys remember Paul Heyman, the little manager, 
Oh, yeah. And a little bit of what he did. Pull it up here. And then they were going to throw in Medusa as well. Oh, you and can't hear this. I had my eyes on, because I was coming back to the manager to manage it. Never mind. That one sucks. Anyway. <laughs> that's, Technical that's, difficulties. <laughs> that's an awkward. Uh, <laughs> and in there, boy, that was. Boo, cool. boo. <laughs> Let's just have a call from heaven, all right? And just call it a night. <laughs> <laughs> you never fail with that. This will have to check your stuff ahead of time. Hello. Oh. Is this the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes? It's a grip. A dream. Uh, it's an honor to talk to you again, especially after yesterday's events. Uh, I'm so sorry of the passing of you yesterday, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Well, you know something, I'm not going to lie. First of all, I want to thank Crockett Promotions, who did so much for me and my family. Yes. All these years, up and down the highway. Yes. There were hard times, there were good times for Big Dust, but now we're moving on to the next level. I've been here working for a new organization. Really? What's the name of that organization? The PMW. What's that? Post Mortem Wrestling at it. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be in just a few weeks, Daddy. Listen to this line up, Big Dust. Let's put together because you know <laughs> I'm a showman, fuck. I know you are, man. And also a businessman. Yes. Myself. Partnering up yeah. with the one they own it, Macho Man, oh. Randy Savage. Wow, and, and let, can, can we talk to the Macho Man up there in heaven? Yeah, hold on, please, Randy. <laughs> wow. So they on the phone. Hold on for a second. Okay, wow, they're getting up in heaven. The American Dream, Dusty Rhodes is calling in. Yeah, who, who is this? Wow, it's this Macho Man, Randy Savage. Macho Man, Randy Savage. <laughs> what? From heaven? Yes! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Green <laughs> <laughs> the crowd still up here, get Chrissy at me and the big man does the rules, yeah! Wow, up in heaven, uh, calling in from the pearly gates. Uh, you know, listen. Uh, Hello, Macho Man! Yeah, it's a Macho Man, and uh, of course, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes just entered the gates of heaven and joining your league. What's uh, the new wrestling up there in He's heaven? He's going to mortem wrestling, the PMW, yeah. Wow, so, and now who's got the strap right now? I think it's the, uh, the ultimate warrior. Well, the ultimate warrior? The ultimate old on one section. Oh, is he there too? <laughs> oh my god! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Up here in the heavens where the immortals walk! Where the true warrior stands! What? Wow, what? Don't smoke a breath in little Oh my god, so the, the post-mortem wrestling organization up in heaven with the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, Macho Man Randy Savage, and the champion, the Ultimate Warrior. Don't go crab a big duck! This big thing coming up! Thank you, American Dream. Call in from heaven and say say goodbye to all the guys up there for us. Absolutely, dude. I love you, kid crap. Take care, buddy. <laughs> so there you have it from Evan. <laughs> That's all the time we got tonight, folks. So thanks for everybody that watched, and we look forward to catching you next week. And in two weeks, the beer. Oh, you didn't tell me the name of the awards were. Oh, the fl the flowing, the flowing pints, the, the flowing, flowing pints. pints. <laughs> <laughs> Executive producer, Average Joe. And we will look forward to getting that put together. Next week, we don't know what brewery it is, so we'll let you know sometime during this weekend. Although, I feel like these guys are pushing from Aguanitas. I don't know. We'll see. That might be the one we do next week. Who knows? Very easy brewery to get beer from. Yeah. That all being said, look forward to catching you then. Maybe tomorrow, impromptu type thing or something we'll do. So, Or this weekend. Just keep posted. Keep drinking those good craft beers and get your beer on. Cheers. Deuces. Deuces. Deuces.